the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Feel Good Friday, February 26th, 2021. And a Rookie of the Year will start a show after that beat drop right there. Uh, no big deal. It was announced either this morning or last night. I'm not 100% sure. I officially won the uh, Rookie Wrestler of the Year. Yeah! Right slide. Right uh, Wrestling Observer, okay, a highly respected mm-hmm. journalistic place. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. has voted for their Rookie of the Year. In tenth place, congrats, Yuki Mashira. Yeah, good year. Congrats, Yuki. Good year. Yuki, congrats, Yuki. Good year. Good year. Uh, number nine, Alan Angels. Great year. Great year. Uh, I I Eight, Blake Christian, what a fucking Man. year. Man. Hey. Uh, in seventh uh, place in the voting, Benjamin Carter. Benjamin, let's go, Benjamin Carter. Uh, in number six, Will Hobbs. Oh, oh, Billy oh, Hobbs. Billy Hobbs. Hobbs is absolutely great. Brother. Uh, in fifth place, by the way, now this one, I mean, people yeah. are talking about maybe greatest wrestler of all time when it's all said and done. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Came in fifth in Rookie of the Year voting. Whoa. Top flight, way to go. Oh, oh, top top flight. Flight. Royalty, okay, yeah. in the wrestling business. Guy I enjoyed watching a lot. We debuted same weekend, by the way. Wow. In WWE, he had had plenty of awesome matches before. In fourth place for the Rookie of the Year voting, Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, Dom. Oh, I boy, Dom. 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 I love Dom. Uh, uh, in third place, S.B. Kento. Oh, oh, yeah. Second place, Anna J. Congrats. Hell of a year, Anna. Hell of a year. Way to go, Anna. Still not good enough. And uh, your Rookie of the Year with 355 votes, I think. Wow. Maybe Landslide. a score of 355. Jeez. I'm not percent sure. Uh, Pat McAfee. Yeah! 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 Great to be here. Ah! Thank you. Now... I have to give credit to obviously uh, my beautiful wife. Yep. You know, course. thanks for everything that you've done. Uh, the boys, thank, thank you, you thank so you. so much, thank boys, you, for everything please. that you Bro. guys have done. Uh, obviously, the wrestling ring I purchased while being incredibly <laughs> intoxicated while I was still in the NFL early in my career. Once I found out I could buy a wrestling ring on the internet. About 2, 3 a.m., I did buy a wrestling ring. Mm-hmm. Everybody said it was stupid. Who's stupid now? <laughs> Thank you, alcohol. Yeah. Thank you, wrestling ring. <laughs> Shout out, alcohol. Because without it, would not have been able to get to the depths of the internet that I was right. at mm-hmm. when I found out I could buy the wrestling ring that is in the room. Right? Shout out to that. Shout out to Rip Rogers, by the way. Shout out, Rip. And shout out to... Uh, Mr. H in NXT for, you know, allowing me the opportunity to go out there and just fucking dominate. I mean, that is, it is great to be the rookie of the year for 2020. And people are wondering, did this, did this award just get created? No, nah, no, it's mm. been around a long, long time. The names that are on the list of rookie of the year winners are names of wrestling royalty. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to 2010. Biggest scumbag ever walking this earth one, Adam Cole. Wow. Okay. Adam Cole. 2011, Daichi Hashimoto. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Jeez. Legend. 2012, this is your favorite wrestler, isn't it, Connor? 2012, that was your oh, favorite wrestler yeah. of all time? Big time. I'm a huge Dynastia fan. Dynastia has yeah. yeah. crushed it. Love. Shout out. Then, uh, Love. 2013, Shout out to Yohei Komatsu, then Dragon Lee. Oh, yeah. Then Chad Gable, oh. Matt Riddle, what up, bro? bro, Katsuyo, bro. Uh, Katsuya Kitamura, oh, uh, Ronda Rousey, oh, ever heard of oh. uh, Jungle Boy last year, and then obviously myself. So Hell congrats yeah. to all the former winners. Okay, it's great to be added to the list of what you guys have. Uh, 
I, I want to bury all of you. Just want to let you know, yeah. like going forward, I hope uh, whenever they look at this list, they say, you know what? 2020 winner, the fucking winner of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But I know that's going to be tough to get to with all the incredible accolades that all the other Rookie of the Year winners have won. But by the end of that thing, I hope that they say, ain't none of them could hold my jock strap. Not even close. Ain't none of them could lace my wrestling boots. Nah. That's the goal of this whole thing. And I assume they all have the same goal. Congrats to everybody being a part of that, but mostly congrats to me. You get a trophy? You know, I'm not hurt. I award? did not know this existed until this morning. Oh. But I should get a belt. Yeah, yeah, championship for sure. I mean, I don't know if anyone else won by 139 votes. Yeah, what were the spreads? Like, whenever uh, Dragon Lee won in 2014, yeah, that what way. did the second place scorer have? I'm sure I, Adam Cole barely won. Yeah, yeah. Barely. he had to squeak by. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the test. He probably paid for it. Yeah, he yeah. probably did pay to win. Yeah, yeah he probably did. Or did like uh, uh, held the the judges hostage. Probably stabbed like, uh, his friends in the back for well, it. Well, uh, yeah, Whoa. He, he's been doing that this entire time. He yeah. just did that on Wednesday, actually. Yet again, he actually punched one of his best friends right in the nuts. Jeez. Yeah, he's a bad guy. You knew it the whole time. Uh -huh. I knew it the whole time. And by the way, uh -huh. while I was on this run of winning Rookie of the Year, it was in the face of adversity and skeptics and haters the entire time. You know, it's being misremembered now that uh, people say, oh, like the wrestling fans, Shaq's getting into AEW, you know what I mean? Babani is over Bonnie. there on Raw, and Snoop Dogg did a splash off the top. Everybody's talking about, you know, in the wrestling community, uh, when celebrities get involved, it's always something that the wrestling fans get mad about, okay? Wrestling yeah. fans don't like it because the celebrities are taking a spot of a wrestler that they're a massive fan of, a wrestler that went to bingo halls, armories, mm -hmm. their whole life has been spent trying to get there. So when celebrities come in and take that spot, it's always one like, oh, they don't deserve to be here, right? Not Can't look at the bigger picture, can't get that the marketing potentially more eyes on the product. So your favorite wrestler will maybe have more eyes on whenever all their hard work does eventually get paid off, uh, maybe next month instead of this month yeah. with the more eyes, that whole thing. But everybody talks about how uh, like if Shaq, when Shaq comes in, if you, if you're somebody in wrestling that hates that, if you're a wrestling fan that hates that, you got other wrestling fans that are like, oh, I bet you loved uh, when Pat came in. I want to let you know there was zero wrestling fans that enjoyed whenever I showed yeah. up. There was zero, zero wrestling fans that liked that when I showed up. Now, I do believe there are some that like me and they are the dumbest community on the internet but it is very nice to know that i was able to win this rookie of the year prestigious award in the face of all the stooges of that internet wrestling mm -hmm. community that had no idea that gold had just been dropped right in front of their goddamn eyeballs and that's what that's what makes this maybe even a little bit more sweet yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. And Pat. stop putting Stephen Amell in the same sentence as me, okay? I went back and watched his match. Can't touch me. I, I just that. I, so go ahead and just shut that one off as well whenever you're having these conversations on Twitter amongst your stupid friends in the wrestling community. Now, let's get to some sports, shall we? How were you going to say? Well, I just wanted to point out that none of those past winners did it during a pandemic either. No, with no fans. Good. Wow. Oh, I forgot about Probably that. never kicked off wow. a Super Bowl either. Oh, well. Oh. They didn't realize it takes all of us this year. Well, mm -hmm. huh. Interesting. Huh. Hmm. I could really go shoot right here. They put that show in a backpack and put it on my back there for a couple weeks. Nobody <laughs> talks about that. Yes, that does not get talked about a lot. I got, um, we this, is, this is for shoot, which is in wrestling business, yeah. like for real. We would we go down there and have no idea what was going to happen and then be like, God damn, like, okay, here we go. Exactly. This is got to show up here. I was very lucky to be a part of it. Very thankful for that opportunity. But the Stooges on the internet, not the people that voted, obviously, the 355 people that knew what the fuck was yeah. going on right yeah. in front of their eyeballs there. Mm -hmm. And probably the hardest time to ever wrestle, a lot of people have, have said it, this whole thing. Um, but it was nice that, you know, there were some people who recognized it because the idiots did not mm -hmm. even realize what was going on. A seven-minute promo. Seven minutes. Seven-minute promo in the middle of the world that is just, <laughs> hey, we need, we need everything to move now, move now, yeah. move now. It's like seven minutes you got out there. It's like, oh, <laughs> all right. Good luck. I mean, I'm not that fucking entertaining. Let's go for it. Hey, I got some shit to say, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity. And hopefully there'll be more. Maybe there won't be. Uh, either way, I was lucky to finally do something that I've always found to be very cool. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when I got drafted to punt, I had never uh, really done the NFL-style punt before. I was first-team all-rookie team. Oh, right? okay. okay. 
There were other rookie punters, by the way. Not a lot. Those guys are much better than me punting long term. Uh, but in that particular, all rookie. Uh, whenever my first year getting in the radio, by the way, I won like the Heisman Radio or something like oh, that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, remember, yeah, yeah, remember that? And yeah. then like, uh, what, first cup rookie of the year. So I don't, what are we? Huh. Is, that, is, that is that good? What's next? You know, mm. what, what, sorry, let's not think about that. Okay, let's enjoy that. Is that good? We should enjoy this moment a little bit. Mm -hmm. We should think about, you're right. Let's, let's embrace the moment just a little bit. Okay, now now what's next? Um, what's the somebody, NBA doing right now? Well, I do have an absolute yeah. bucket right now yep. in this right hand. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, I have gained eh, 30 to 35 pounds since I would have been in anywhere near shape to get down the court maybe twice. Yeah. So we are going to have to maybe fast track and exercise. But you're right, maybe G League next year. Mm. Maybe G League. Be easy. And the church will help that out because you got that full court in there. Yeah. You'll be able to run those right, sprints yeah. up oh, and down. You're 100% right. We'll be running full. Hell yeah. Probably mm -hmm. training sessions in the morning. Oh, yeah. Whistles. Mm -hmm. And the line. Whole, hell yeah. Hit the line. Yeah, the whole thing. Digs your deep in thought over there. I was trying to think of what's going to benefit financially the most that you're like rookie of the year of. That's maybe – Maybe dominate the PGA Tour and be Rookie of the Year on the PGA Tour. Well, yeah. see, Here we go. We, that is in the plan, mm -hmm. all right? But it's a senior tour. I, I, I'm going to try to get into senior. Not as much money on that one. Well, maybe. I mean, we're going to have to market a little bit. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to figure out how to promote it a little bit so we get a little bit higher prizes, a little maybe a couple more eyeballs. But it is hard to find the senior tour. It mm -hmm. is very hard to find a senior tour. When uh, JD got in there? Yeah. John Daly, whenever he entered the champion store, sorry. Yeah. Yep. I wanted to watch him out there, and there was a little buzz. It was impossible to find those. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to have to negotiate some TV yeah. deals. Yep. Okay, if I get in there, that that could be. Uh, but there's probably nothing else I could do. I, yeah. I, like, well, I think the quickest thing you could do winning rookie of the year or potentially greatest on earth would be cornhole. True. If you just uh -huh. oh, yeah, locked right. in on you're cornhole right. that is real the quick. One. Or hey, ACL. Just want to let you know, I don't know when it's going to be, okay? I don't know when it's going to be because I do have respect for cornhole mm -hmm. and, like, it does take a lot of work to get there. But know that it is within me to have that. Yeah. I would have to dedicate a lot of time to it. I will eventually because I love the game, love the sport of cornhole. But you're right, that's probably the one that will happen inevitably. Yeah. Go ahead and cut this, by the way. I, I don't know what, what it's – I do know what day it is. I actually said it just a little bit ago. Uh -huh. February 26, 2021. Let's assume cornhole happens at some point. Maybe not in the next year, not two years, not five years. Maybe, But at some point, cornhole will be a full on. And don't sleep on NASCAR. I mean, you could hop in that one of those sweet. cars. And I'll tell you what. Hit it. After watching that uh, E60 that you guys have not watched yet. Okay, I'm looking right in your eyes right now, and none of you have watched Intimidators it. Intimidators this weekend. Uh, I will. I'm not. I thought I was like, yeah, I'll do NASCAR after watching that. No way. I'm not. No. I'm not. Those dudes are nuts. They are nuts. They're rockets. absolutely insane. Uh, Orlovsky just faced I mean, He knows we're in the middle of the show, so I'm going to call him back. Danny, because Danny, the only Danny. news really today is the same news from yesterday, which is quarterback news. Now, the New England Patriots. He's hey, we're live. We're live. I was, I was just calling you back. Oh. Well, okay. So, Carson Wentz signs with the Indianapolis Colts, Dan, okay? You know, and this morning on Get Up, we realized that there was a graphic on there <laughs> that said, this is how you fix Carson Wentz. And then it said, according to Dan Orlovsky on there. And I huh. want to let you know, was there ever a time in your life, maybe after you were running out of that end zone from Jared Allen or the next week, Ooh. throwing a 96-yard bomb to Calvin Johnson to bounce back and get the haters off of you? Maybe whenever you're with the Colts uh, and you won some games and almost got us out of the Andrew Luck sweepstakes, was there ever a time in your life that you thought, you know what? I'm going to be the authority on quarterback talking because that's what that graphic looked like. The graphic looked like how to rebuild Carson Wentz, ESPN, get up, according to Dan Orlovsky. Did you ever think that? You are the authority on quarterbacks now. I wanted to call and congratulate you earlier, but now you're calling us in the middle of the goddamn show, so now we have to do this. Congratulations means the world to me. What, what about congratulate me? I won Rookie of the Year wrestler this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Huh. Bay Bay. Yeah! yeah! Right, we'll talk to you, dude. See ya. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Hi, boy, Dan. I'll get a text back from him. Uh it says... Are you patronizing me there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. Not at all. Not you. I got that. Can we put that graphic back up, though? Yep. Dan, because I was going to talk about the quarterbacks, but there's really no new news in there, okay? Mm. Russell Wilson, the teams that want Russell Wilson, they're all trying to recruit him now at this point. Mm. He, he put out a workout where his feet looked incredibly fast. I mean, yeah. I, I wanted to – it was hard not to shit talk 
the Russell Wilson workout thing where he says all fuel because, hey, it's your team that's creating this entire fuel that could potentially be happening. And then while you're watching a workout, you're like, <laughs> that is why Russell Wilson, if he goes to any of these teams, they're immediately in the conversation oh. if we're going to win a Super Bowl. He was running the uh, the icky shuffle basically up onto an elevated surface there uh, without a ladder, and his feet looked like they were, I don't know, faster than anything I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Lightning. Good for Russell Wilson. So that, that has happened. Um, Deshaun Watson, Houston still saying they're not going to move on at all. Every other hour or so, we'll get an update that Houston's still not listening to any calls, and then that becomes news. And Ben Roethlisberger's looking stronger than ever, says Rooney. Yeah. Wow. I don't know, Rooney, the second, I believe. They had a meeting. He, he said that they had a meeting. It went well. We want him back. His arm, I would say, he says, uh, is as strong as almost as strong as ever. Uh, so I think he's certainly capable of getting a job done. This comes just a few days after he says that he would like Ben to help them win a championship. This all but uh, cements Ben Roethlisberger coming back to Pittsburgh with a restructured contract to see how they can do this thing. Yeah, on the, in the meeting they said, we'll bring you back on one stipulation, and Ben agreed to that stipulation, and then they loaded a pallet of Jergens in the back of Ben's huh. truck and sent him on his way home. Mm. And that was Good interesting when he said that you're tonight and the next month or so, yeah, maybe that next year. Uh, yeah. that he said his arm is as strong as ever. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I just, I just want to let you know. From what he was saying, in a place where the, the audio should not have gotten out. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm, no. I'm assuming at some point, some muscles in his arm were stronger than they currently are right now. Oh, yeah. But he did look good. And if he is anything like those other Tommy Yawn recipients, right? Correct. Don't they start throwing the ball harder? Oh, hell yeah. It's like a rookie of the year thing where they just tighten the... Mm -hmm. the by the way. Tighten the band. Oh, up. yeah. That's right. I'm, oh. I didn't even do that because... Uh. I'm the rookie of the year. But now that we're here. Huh. <laughs> Congrats to the baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Oh, what's his name? Garden Hoser. No. What's his name? Rosen Gardner. Rosen Gardner. Mm. Not Garden Hoser. Me and, they, they are. He is called that. I know, whenever he steps into the batter's box. Rolling but me and Garden Hoser are both uh, <laughs> both rookies of, of the year and the whole thing. Oh, yeah. But he got his. He had surgery. His arm got tightened, yeah. and he was throwing people out from center hey, field. Hey, Henry. Henry Rowe and Gardner. Henry yeah. Rowe and Gardner. There it is. And then he had to throw the floater at the end. Yeah. Yeah. It was his mom. <laughs> Spoiler. That's crazy. Did not. I thought it was the, the, it was the mom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy, and the tears and Insane. the whole thing. But anyways, is that what's going to happen to Ben Roethlisberger? Yeah. Is his arm just going to continue to get strong? Yep. If they can somehow protect Ben for the next four to five years, is that arm only going to get better and better and better as they move forward? Because the thought in Pittsburgh is another year with Ben Roethlisberger is another year delaying or waiting for the rebuild, which is inevitable sure. at this point. Will he be able to win a Super Bowl? Uh, ben thinks so. Rooney thinks so. I'm not certain all Steelers fans think so. I would assume some do. Uh, but let's see how this whole, whole thing pans out. They got, you know, they got a lot of free agents. Got some people that retired. Yep. Got people dancing with uh, Power Rangers right now. That uh, potential right. coming. I ain't that right, Dick? Yeah. Is is Ben better than Rex Grossman? Is he better than Whoa. Trent Dilfer? Yeah. Is he Much better, different league now. Yeah. Better yeah. than Joe Flacco. No, but I do like the better fact that. Better than Dwayne Haskins. Yes. Is he? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Oh. Do we? I didn't. I did not want to. Lose. That's Gumpy. That's Zito. By the way, the only real news is Dan Orlovsky fixing Carson Wentz. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying this strictly because. You know, Carson coming to Indianapolis wasn't, you know, my, as a fan of the Indianapolis Colts, my first, like, hey, this is what we need. Everybody was like, get Carson to, to Frank Reich again. It'll be good for everybody. And those people were just Philadelphia Eagles fans that wanted to see Carson Wentz have success again while also have their team move on and move forward to something else and potentially get rid of Carson Wentz's contract. But they were shielding that with saying, no, no, we love Carson. It'd be good for Carson to get Frank Reich. It's like, oh, uh, do you love Carson more than you love the Eagles? Are you going to become... A, t a fan of whatever team Carson Wentz goes? No, no, no. We love the Eagles. Oh, so there's also a little bit of, let's get this fucking contract out of here get and let's out. move on. Potentially. But all those people were very loud. Long before the actual conversations of Carson coming to Indy happened, those people were very loud because it'd be good for Carson. It'd be good for Frank. It'd be good for the Colts. It's like, over here at the Colts, I I'm not 100% sure. It's just necessarily great for the Colts. Phillip Rivers and Frank, they did well this past season. I mean, didn't go as far as they should have or could have, but they did win. Great time to watch. Felt like we were, we could really go and get it if we had to. Will Carson Wentz be the same thing? I'm not sure. Dan Orlovsky says this is what has to happen for Carson Wentz to play good football. This is what has to happen for Carson Wentz to look like a, uh, a professional 
a college football player again. Yep. La- last year, I'm not 100 sure he would have been the number one overall pick if he was playing in college the way he was playing last year. Oh, Being 100 percent serious, thought he was completely broken, and now it turns out he potentially was because he hated what was going on behind the scenes. He and Dougie P not happy. Dan Orlovsky says, "Play call." Understand why it is being called and expectations for execution. Okay. Oh. So him and Frankie Boy, Coach Reich, they'll be on the same page and he'll understand why it's being called and the expectations for execution. By the way, you would hope that your quarterback at this level who has already been paid would already know that, but understand that he and Dougie P potentially weren't on the same page. How about his eyes? Recognize coverage pre snap and keep eyes downfield through progressions post snap. Okay, so he wasn't doing that last year. Is that what he's saying? Is this what we got to fix? He wasn't doing his Looking eyes? Okay, rush. that's like rookie quarterback shit, right? Yeah. Isn't it? I'm, I I could not do this. Hey, I want to let you know, I could not do this. But I'm also not getting paid $40 million next year mm-hmm. to, to be a quarterback in the NFL. And then his footwork. Discipline is vital. Mary stride length with the release of the football. Whoa. So Dan just put out a camp basically there and said this is what he noticed on film that it seemed like Carson Wentz was getting wrong. Is Frank Wright going to be able to fix all of those? Maybe. Hopefully. That's really the only news in the football world. Today. There is one major thing missing there. Do not run into your own offensive lineman. Hold on now. We must stop for one second and ask. Was that a mispronunciation of the word <laughs> or is that how Canadians announce offense? Offensive, offensive. No. Mm. Is it offensive? Offensive. I kind of like it better. I can't uh, confirm. I was offended by you saying it like yeah. that. Well, that's what I'm saying, because whenever you go on the offense, though, like that seems a little bit more, you know what I mean? That seems a little bit more powerful, doesn't it? Like, I am offended. Yeah. Like, that is, I am offended is just not as, I am o. Offended. Canadians are much more offended, I think, than, <laughs> than we are. I, you know what I mean? Like, that is... That, the offense, that's a lot stronger yeah, sounding yeah. than just offense, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of. Not really, but I, I, I do kind of get what you're saying. <laughs> you hate it, huh? No, I don't hate it. I don't care either way. I mean, for to Gumpy's point, the offensive lineman who was playing rugby excuse a year me. ago was getting pushed in his face. Offensive but, lineman. Offensive, lineman. excuse me. Was, Gumpy, that was awesome. Hey, any more of those that you can just go ahead and switch it up. Let them out. Hey, the bag's full, my friend. Oh, yeah. A lot of Canadian sayings up there. I, I did realize that when I was watching Letter Kenny, I'm like, I don't, is this the same language? And it, <laughs> I guess so. It was incredible. The way it was being delivered was hilarious. I understand that. But there was a lot of Googling, like, am I allowed to use that word? Is that, a, you <laughs> know what I mean? Like, there's was, there was a lot of like, those types of questions. So any type, anytime you want to bring those out, would love it. Great beard today, by the way. What do you have, Nick? Organization is the big one organization yeah instead of organization when you talk about your team your franchise oh you say this organization their offense is terrible in this organization <laughs> yeah. and that's what it's about oh, my pasta gosh. is a big one as well past it you know we have some no people. pasta like pasta what what yeah pasta yeah so there's no italians up there huh no none, yeah. no the italians ain't going to canada <laughs> hell no no well, much Mont- montreal they are there's lots of italians, there's in, of montreal. italians in canada pal just maybe not on the west coast where gumpy lives out in the boonies <laughs> all right speaking of canada join us now greatest goalie to ever play <laughs> yep the only hockey no there's only two hockey players that i've owned uh no that's a lie too my first hockey jersey that i purchased with my money okay Okay, as an adult, yep, is of this man, goaltender for the Vegas Golden Knights, three-time Stanley Cup champion with the Pittsburgh Penguins, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Andre Fleur. Yeah! Yeah! Fleur, how's it going, Fleur? I'm good. How you doing? Hey, I want to let you know, you brought a lot of happiness into my life as I was a young, drunk, uh, early 20, <laughs> late teenager life in Pittsburgh. So I appreciate you. It's, it's too late to thank you now, but I have to get that out early. Thanks for all the celebrations you caused for my friends and I. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you had a good time. Very nice. Hey, uh, bonjour, ça va? Oui, ça va, toi? Uh, Come see, come see. I mean, uh, I, I got nothing else. Imagine if I would have. Imagine if I would have just done that entire thing. Four years, yeah. French class. I couldn't tell you anything else. Mark, uh, thank you so much for joining us. You're a legend. You're having your best year. It seems like maybe of your entire career. Uh, it feels like oh nine again. You know what I mean? What is it? What is it about this year out there in Vegas making you absolutely crush it? How how are things going with the COVID protocol? How's the season going for everything? Yeah, that's uh. 
Lots of, lots of questions in a short period of time, right? Uh, come on. <laughs> I wish I knew him in French. I wish I knew uh, him in French. That would have been nice. Uh, it's going well. You know, I can't complain. Um, yeah, obviously, we, we have a good team. And, you know, when you're a goalie and you have a good team in front of you, it always makes you look a little better, you know. So uh, I'm very fortunate to uh, to play for, the, for these guys. And, um, you know, just... I'm getting older, right? I know there's not as much left in front of me, so I'm trying to enjoy uh, what I can, you know, what's left, and uh, try to enjoy every, every game and, and the time with the boys in the room. And obviously, uh, COVID kind of took some fun out of the game, you know, <laughs> but um, at least we're very fortunate to keep playing and, um, yeah, come to the rink every day still. That's an interesting thing. I think it happens in all sports. I think you're seeing it with LeBron right now in the NBA. I think you're seeing it with Tom. It's nice to hear you acknowledge it as well. As you get older, like you appreciate the things a little bit more, right? Because you have no idea. It's like maybe the practices back in the day that you maybe dreaded or retired or didn't want to do. Now that you're older, like each meeting almost feels better. At the when you look, I mean, I don't want you to obviously look back on your career because you're done or whatever. But those times in Pittsburgh. With that team, you guys seem to be so tight, so successful. You were the third goalie ever drafted number one overall after, you know, Gino and Sid were brought in there, that squad. Do you do you think that that type of team is something that is very, very difficult to find, obviously? And why is it hard to find that team, you think? Uh, yeah, I, th I think it is. Um, I think we had a special chemistry. You know, we, we, we came in out pretty young right and and we sucked you know we sucked <laughs> for a few years and uh, we lost a lot you know so I think we had to find a way out of it you know we had to find a way to uh, to the winning side and and then we started having success together and um, I think that really brought us uh, real close together we had a good bunch of veterans too to uh, lead the way and, um, and and we started having some success you know we had a lot of fun off the ice after games and stuff, you know, and, and we were winning a lot of games. So it's uh, it great hockey, great time to, uh, to be playing at that time. What was it like with Lord Stanley down there on the south side? Pretty good? Pretty good down there on the south side with Lord Stanley? I, I think I've seen it once or twice down there. The celebrations are always epic, I assume. <laughs> yeah, it's always the best part, right? I feel uh, <laughs> it goes for a few days, you know, and my, the first one in 09, I felt like I could keep going every day. Time. But then the last one's like in 16, 17. You know, after a few, two, uh, three days, and I was had enough, you know, <laughs> I need to go home and rest. But definitely a lot of good times on, on the south side there. Okay. Uh, me too, by the way. Um, it's a great place. <laughs> Who hasn't, right? Yeah. It's a, I think it had a Guinness World Record there for a while as the – uh, most bars packed into a space. Like everybody thinks like down in New Orleans is the place or whatever. It's like New Orleans is definitely a lot more fun, good time vibe or whatever. But in Pittsburgh, Southside, listen, it's a great time. After midnight, if you're not Marc-Andre Fleury or Sidney Crosby, keep your head on a swivel walking around there. <laughs> but it is a very, very, very good time. When the expansion happens in Vegas and you get sent out of there and, um, you know, it was – it was one of those things where, as a Pittsburgh Penguin fan, incredibly bummed about you being one of the staples of that Penguins team. But you almost went on to become like a face of a franchise that was just starting. What has it been like seeing the Vegas town? I mean, this year obviously can't because Uncle COVID's come in and fucking ruined everything. But what has it been like kind of seeing Vegas become a, a hockey town? Because there's been a lot of success early. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, there was so many unknowns, you know, coming to Vegas, you know, at first and obviously it was, it was tough leaving Pittsburgh because I've, I've been there for so long and, and, you know, met, met a lot of great people and on the team and off the team, right? And, uh, but I was very fortunate, you know, looking back to, to come to Vegas and, um, I didn't know if there was going to be any people at the game, you know, like with people like hockey in the desert, right? And um, <laughs> it's turned out for the best, you know, so we've, we've had a great uh, first season. And um, I've met so many people that told me they'd never watched hockey before, and, and now they're the big fans of the team, you know. So I'm really, uh, really proud of how the team got into the community and how we uh, got everybody together to rally behind us. You know, it's been, it's been great since. You do it all, eh? French, <laughs> huh? chicken. How about that? I, I, you see this? This is a Canadips uh, thing, you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. CBD pouches. Clap bomb so big, flatten the, flatten the side of it. You see that, Mark? 
Yeah. Flattening pucks. <laughs> Every slap shot. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is somebody that whenever they shoot it, it's a you, it, it's a little bit more of a, I mean, because you got pads on, but everybody's like, oh, the pads just protect them or whatever. That thing is like uh, with the hardest rubber of all time coming at like 100 miles an hour, and your hand has leather in front of it. So there has to be some sort. At this point, I assume you're used to it, obviously. But I'm just saying, who is somebody you play against that you think like, okay, whenever they're about to go, we got to fucking, you know, maybe numb the hand a little bit here. Yeah, you got to bear down a bit. Um, I think like guys like Ovechkin shoots really hard, and uh, Shara, Weber, Weber's heavy too. Who's the uh, Weber in Montreal? Yeah, I don't, Weber. I don't know who that is. I mean, <laughs> uh, Shara is in the, um, Washington now. Big guy. Oh, like former Bruin? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I do know him. Big, big body. He's big, yeah. body. big body. Yeah. Big, big body. Big guy, yeah. <laughs> we had one, uh, maybe you remember John Leclerc. He was in Pittsburgh, oh, too, God, for, yeah. for a few years. Philly Early in my career, though. Hey, um, yeah. Sidney Crosby's the greatest hockey player of all time. What was he like as a teammate? Awesome. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know, I feel fortunate I got to, to play with him for so long, right? He's, uh, every day he comes to the rink and, and tries hard in practice, but always very competitive, you know, and um, loves to have fun, you know, he's on and off the ice, he's been great, he's a great leader also, and I think he makes uh, it makes everybody on the team better, and uh, that's why I think we had some, uh, some success with, the, with him as a captain. Did you and him live at Mario's house together? Or how is that? Does he just have a, an entire <laughs> estate? How does that work? Uh, Mario's a very nice guy in his family also, right? And I was there for, uh, for a little bit. And then uh, Sid came in, uh, I think, a couple of years later. And I was, uh, I, was, I was out of there. But Sid lived there for a long time, though. I think, like, I forgot how many years, but I don't know, like six, seven years, something like that, maybe. Hey, okay. Okay, so you can explain this. Is he just in there with like, like I see him walking up for breakfast, like with uh, Mario's kids. Is that is that how that, or is there just a, he has like numerous houses on the property? No, it's the same same big. It's a big house, right? But <laughs> we're living in the, the same one. And um, Sid lived there for six years. Damn, was <laughs> I'm an Uncle Mario's house. Not, was Mario Don't taking? On this, but he lived there for a long for a long time. <laughs> Was Mario taking shots on you, like before bedtime? Yeah, when like you hallway were hockey. Were you guys oh. now like playing a little hallway hockey? Uh, no, we did. No. Uh, his son Austin, though, remember uh, we had a couple uh, games in the basement, like knee hockey and stuff. Oh, yeah. Did you let him score because his dad's the owner? <laughs> <laughs> no, I gotta show him good. So he keeps it <laughs> very, very true. Nick, what do you have, pal? Flower, there was a story uh, years ago about your time in Pittsburgh. You used to wear the bright yellow pads and you made a switch and so the story goes that uh an eye doctor actually wrote you a letter and suggested you make the switch because it was messing with the shooter's eyes seeing the net behind you is that true yeah true um i think it might have been no eight or nine i think oh eight something like that uh lady from cad actually from ottawa uh an optometrist and then she said um that's why the buses, the school bus and the taxis are yellow because they're very bright and it catches the eye really quickly. Um, so if you were something more like white, uh, the, maybe the shooters would have to uh, look at you a little bit more to see where your, your oh. legs or gloves are. Wow, and they just went to Stanley Cup. Yeah, how about that? Oh, wow. Shout out yeah. optometrist. And yeah. Shout out, yeah. shout out the optometrist. We want to, we want Stanley Cup. Because <laughs> we want to, shout out to that lady. Um, <laughs> for goalies, it's uh, super mental. I would assume, right? That's kind of the conversation. Is it's all in between the ears, and then there's obviously droughts that come and go with the entire. When you're a goalie, what is the biggest part about it mentally? It's just like staying locked in, or like trusting yourself. Like what? is the biggest thing uh is it is it confidence like every other professional athlete position like because it feels like it's much more of a tasking job mentally than people give it credit for yeah i think um when things go well you know it feels everything feels easier right but when uh when you let in like two three four in a game and there's still uh 30 minutes to be played you know that's when uh sometimes maybe you can doubt yourself or you try to do too much you know and uh, you get yourself in trouble that way. Um, or some games, you know, you don't have many shots and your team's been great, you know, so you're just kind of sitting there by yourself 
just waiting, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> you kind of have to find ways to stay in the game. So when they come, you're actually ready to uh, to make a stop. Do you have a goal? No, I missed like uh, when I was in Pittsburgh. I missed like twice. Maybe like. Uh, oh, this, uh, no. Yeah, well, it was pretty rattle. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. I mean, that's yeah. a moment. They pull the goalie. You have it on your stick. Oh my God! Here we go. Yeah. This because it only happens what like probably three times a year, maybe once a year. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, maybe a couple times. But then, yeah, you gotta clear like above everybody, right? And it's gonna be in straight line, so it's not easy. Yeah. Hey, you get one this year. I'll give a okay. hundred thousand dollars to whatever foundation you want it, want it to go to. Don't get me trying every night. No. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what we're looking. Hey, hundred thousand bucks if you do it. It rarely happens, so we'll definitely do it. What do you have, Connor? Yeah, Far. Uh, when you're on the ice, do you talk shit to the players and or the refs because the hockey refs are such savages? And also, do you talk shit in French or English? Uh, usually to the ref, I suck up more. <laughs> because I feel Smart. like they're the one that are gonna help me, you know. So I always try to stay nice with them. Uh, the players, I feel like I maybe talk shit, maybe to guys I know, guys I played with. If he's French, I speak French. If he's English, I speak English. You no. know, whatever. It comes out, it, it comes out easier in French, but um, yeah. When those dudes are just parked in front of you, all right, and how? Because it's not often that you, you know, get into disputes, but when somebody's a massive part of hockey is somebody getting right in front of you and fucking you over. Like that is a that is a strategy that is used in hockey. Like that is something. That, how do, do you ever how when do you decide when like how do you know when you can like hit the guy in front of you and move him? And has there ever been any beefs you've gotten into because of that? I, I, I have. Yeah. Um, so there's two right now. There's two refs that can call a penalty, right? So there's always one by my net and one is like more in the middle of the ice kind of. So there used to be only one guy. So when there was only one guy that could call penalty, I, I would watch him. And then if, uh, if like he wasn't looking at me, then I would hit guys in the balls or. <laughs> <laughs> that was like pretty, pretty funny, but guys don't grab me. though. It's like, if you ever fucking touch me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> punch in the face, you know, like that's, that's pretty. I don't know. I still like the. I still like it, but nowadays I just find it. If I can't see, then that's when maybe I'll give him a little, little shot, just so I can not as hard, just so I don't get a penalty right for something like that. But just enough so I can see the puck. Do you have a full stretching routine you have to go through? That you, that's like uh, I assume you have to be one of the most flexible people on earth. Like that's. Everybody assumes kickers and punters have to be flexible, but you guys are down in that butterfly, oh, and then you're just spreading out, and then you have to be able to explode from that position as well off the boat. Do you have like an entire, you know, because they say uh, sumo wrestlers, they like force them, <laughs> they like right. break their, they like rip their groins and their hamstring. Is that what it's like as a child, as a goaltender? <laughs> like, hey, we need you to be able to get all the way down here, and they're just like getting shoved. Like, what? How is that just something you naturally had? I feel like I did for, I think till I was 25, I probably never really stretched in my life. I was always pretty uh, limber, I guess. But then uh, yeah, I started getting old and especially now, <laughs> I get even lot older, right? So uh, I do have people, my trainers are helping me out a lot, trying to keep my hip, my groins loose and um, because it can, uh, can get tight pretty quickly nowadays. Heard you're a big prank guy, huh? Yeah, big prank guy. Like to keep the uh, jovial in the locker room, yeah? Anything cool <laughs> that you would like to talk about that you jump? For instance, I was on a team uh, that shipped a guy's car to Montana. Okay, your uh, turn. What did you do? I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep that in the bag. Maybe, yeah. hey, keep that one in the bag. Go ahead and just ship somebody's car awesome. somewhere. Like I parked somebody's car like far away in the, in the parking lot at the end of it. You know, I have somebody drive me back, but I never <laughs> ship it to Montana. It's Jeez. tough to get back. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like every day a little shit, you know. But I think uh, what I like is like when you go in somebody's hotel room and just fuck with them, you know, with that. Can I say that or should yeah. I not say it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, You've said it three times, by the way. If you couldn't, yeah, you would have taken down our show, and uh, the hundred thousand dollar donation thing would have been gone immediately. So you can definitely say it, okay, Math? Let's go ahead and just keep it going. You go into the hotel room. What do you do? Turn the heat on? Uh, I think uh, turn the heat on. Then you call for um, 
uh, wake up call like at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put the alarm clock to behind the TV like at three in the morning. <laughs> And when the, when it goes off, and you put the radio on, so when it goes off, the guy thinks it's a uh, TV, you know. And then he tries to like shut it off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then in the, on the toilet, there's like um, a rubber tube. Uh, so when you flush it, right, it fills the tank with that oh, rubber yeah. tube. So you can pull it out and just put it on the side of the cover, like this kind of. <laughs> so when the guy like flushes it, and then the wider just keep pouring it. <laughs> 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 and then it doesn't stop until he puts it back in the tank. Do you guys live on yeah. the road normally? This year a little bit different, but is hockey very? It, it's like NBA travel. Are you guys home more? How's that? Are you guys? Because this is, this is high level hotel stuff here. This is I've been in a yeah. hotel numerous times in my life here. Do you guys live on the road? Is that the normal lifestyle? Uh, we do a bunch. I think we're a little bit more at home than on, on the road. But like sometimes we go on the road for ten days, fourteen days. You know, sometimes three, four days. So. Depends on the schedule, right? But we're we got a bunch. So we have uh, somebody in the studio from the town of Canada, Gumpy. Mark, you like every off season, it's kind of rumored that you're going to go back to Pittsburgh. How much would that mean to you to go back and finish your career there? Yeah, let's go ahead and get you back. Hey, right, let's go <laughs> Come on back. Hey, Vegas is cool. Hey, they got a franchise. Come on. Hey, oh, hockey yeah. in the desert. That's cool. Let's go ahead and get you back to Pittsburgh, Matt. We need you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, awesome. You know, I, I'm wearing this logo still, and they're paying my paycheck. So I got <laughs> you love being a Golden Knight. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, obviously, Pittsburgh means a lot to me. You know, I've I've had so many good times, great memories, and a um, lot of good friends still there. And um, but obviously, I'm I'm in Vegas, and uh, things are well. You know, really loving the place, loving the team, and. Um, no, very, very fortunate. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. All right. I mean, not the answer I want to hear, but I mean, it's a good answer, though. I, I know what you're saying. The, so uh, when you're a goalie, do you watch film of other goalies to get better? Do you watch yourself at this point? I mean, you're so far along in this whole thing. I assume you have your Do you pick up moves? Is there like new moves that some goalies bring in? Like, has that happened or has the kind of the goalie position been the same for some time now since Pat's come in? No, I do. I do look at other guys. Um, I think like I, I've changed little things, you know, how I play like uh, a few times over my career. Right. I think new techniques uh, come out and I think they're I'll always give it a shot. Try, try it out. If I like it, you know, I'll, I'll do them. And if I don't, then I just you know, forget about it. Right. Keep doing what I was doing. But uh, I do like that. I think you can always improve and, and learn from other guys and um, I, yeah, I still do now. You should see my glove. <laughs> oh, I mean, it is. Hey, Matt, we're talking full on like a fucking ninja, dude. <laughs> like a ninja, dude. What do you got, Dix? Mark, I'm a, I'm a full on degenerate gambler, and I know it's the first season in Vegas. If a way team got to Vegas the night before they were playing, oh, yeah. the Vegas flu was a real thing. Could oh. you smell the alcohol on the ice uh, of away teams getting to Vegas the night before? <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say that, but I think some teams look a little roughed up, a little banged up. So. Definitely. But yeah, it's, maybe that helped us out a bit too. <laughs> but some teams, though, they, they made like strict rules. So they would, some team flew in like uh, later at night so they couldn't go anywhere. Or even I think one team flew in the morning off so, so they couldn't go out the night before, you know? So I think they were. The thing about yeah. Vegas, though, you fly in the morning. I mean, you're potentially hitting. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Get There's a pool it. party there yeah. now. Now you're hitting a real good time. Hey, Mark, I appreciate you so much for your time. You score a goal this year, hundred thousand to a foundation of your choice. Awesome. I'll keep that in mind. I'll try shooting a few. <laughs> Imagine he hits it. Sports hits off of the oh opponent's God. face, goes in the oh. net. <laughs> then we got game tied now, overtime. All of a sudden, just all hell breaks loose. Another team might let it in. Now. Oh my Another God. Goalie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Awesome. <laughs> Just let it fit in, you know? Au revoir, pal. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Andre Florida. Yeah. Let's go, uh, Hey, uh, guys. Not mucho gracias. Au revoir. Enchanté. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Is he still on? Hey, merci beaucoup, dude. Fait plaisir. Merci à toi. Bon show. Bonne journée. Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Ciao. laughs> All right, let's get to a international show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Multiple languages. That's right. That guy's awesome. <laughs>
They had Toll and Frank, the, the water coming out. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> they, the alarm. They were not shy about partying in the South Side. No, no, Max we had Talbot it. had a house right across from my house, and it was nice, and it was always popular. Yeah, it was a good time. 2009, by the way, was when I got into the NFL. So, oh, yeah, I was. A I mean, I had worked out. Awesome. I had a good time back there. I was. I have seen Lord Stanley in the South Side. Mm -hmm. I have personally. Oh, I've, I've, I've made eye contact with it, oh, sure. touched it, and then went over to the bathroom. You touched the cup. Oh yeah. Hey, oh, wow. always brought it down, Marius. That so. eye doctor stole a Stanley Cup from the Detroit <laughs> Red Wings. <laughs> Let's get to a break. <laughs> this is Pat McAfee Show. We'll see you on the other side. This is Remember the Titans. How's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. I do a lot of things. Today, I am a professional analyst getting ready for the Thursday night football opener in beautiful Nippert Stadium with the Cincinnati Bearcats here at higher ground. This secluded world. Good squad, good place, excited for this morning practice. I'm obviously unbiased, but I'm pulling hard for Cincinnati to do well on Thursday night. I like to say, all these clipboard quarterbacks. <laughs> 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 This has been so cool to see. Whenever we were driving out here into the sticks, uh, my boys and I from Indianapolis, we were told by Coach Fickle it was a 40 minute drive from where we live. Absolute lie, hour and a half out here. Uh, but as we were getting out here, we didn't know what we were gonna show up to. And this is such a cool scene here. I remember whenever I was in college, we won a lot of games, beat Cincinnati a couple times. It was a great day. But I remember my boys, right? Like I still am in touch with them every single day, every single week. We had this moment where we went from boys to become men. And you guys were a really young team last year, but to got to experience a lot of wins. Like now the expectation levels are high. And I can't wait to talk you all up on Thursday night against UCLA. UCLA refused to respond to my tweet. So I am a Bearcat fan on that opening night, and I cannot wait to watch you guys dominate. And uh, I think this is such a cool thing. Coach, I can't thank you enough for your hospitality. I got a bunch of swag from you guys, too. This has been a cool day. Enjoy this, though. This doesn't happen a lot. Even when you get into the NFL, it's not like college. It's not like your boys. It's not like this. It's a whole different world that you'll remember forever. And I was honored to be here to watch you today. And I can't wait to watch you guys go win the thing on Thursday night and then throughout the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Welcome back from your <clears throat> bathroom break. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Here's Pat. 
Welcome back to the show. This Feel Good Friday is brought to you by CBDMD. Right now, when you go to CBDMD.com, use promo code McAfee, that's M-C-A-F-E-E, you'll get 25% off. What? Whoa. CBDMD has superior CBD, and it is the way to go if you have struggle with sleeping. Not if you have struggle, if you have struggle with sleepy. Yes, there it is. If you have struggle with sleepy, uh -huh. you need to CBDMD with their CBDPM Ooh. sleep easy helper thing. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. CBDPM blends sleep promoting ingredients like melatonin, valerian root, and chamomile Ooh. with 500 milligrams of high quality CBD to create a powerful and effective sleep aid and sleep PM bath salts. Fuse superior CBD and melatonin with a mixture of Epsom, Dead Sea, and Himalayan salts Ooh. to turn any bathtub into a luxury spa experience. They're right here. Whoa. Wow. Those look awesome. Yeah, they are. By the way, my wife loves them. Uh, I, She's probably going to be pissed, actually, that I have one down here because uh. we are out at the house. Uh, never was a bath person. Still really not a bath person. Mm -hmm. Wife is a bath person. It's nice, you know, romance. Get in the bath with wife. Okay. She has bath bombs and shit like that. Ooh. The bath salts from CBDMD have been a crowd pleaser at the house. So if you have a lady in your life who is potentially a bath human, likes bath bombs, these bath salts from CBDMD are absolutely amazing. And CBDPM helps us all sleep at night. Go to CBDMD.com. Use promo code McAfee, M-C-A-F-E-E, -E, and you get 25% off superior CBD products. Uh, shout to them. Welcome back to the show here. Big thanks to Mark andre Fleury. Oh, yeah, he's a man. Thank you, Flair. Thank that you was awesome. Flair. That was absolutely awesome. Nobody watches hockey. I wish more no. people <laughs> did, but they should watch that interview and say, okay, if hockey's got that guy in it, I'd like to be a fan. What a legend of a dude. Will the hockey community uh, in, enjoy that, Nick? Is that something that the uh, hockey community, although small, uh, it is a powerful <laughs> thing. Will they Will they enjoy that interview, you think? Yeah, yeah, we get it. It's like the Aldi brand of sports, I know. Uh, Flower is like universally liked across the league and he's just such a good guy. People eat it up. He's the best. Yeah, he is the best. And by the way, you would never find Mark andre Fleury level of human <laughs> no way. or anything in an Aldi actual store. Nah. What do you mean? You've, You've never know. been. You don't fucking know. You know, Z. <laughs> the office feels... got into quite a beef. One of the beasts. It's over the our beast. charcuterie board. Okay, <laughs> we have Shark Board Fridays. Try to add a little class in here. <laughs> Our original Sharkboard Maker's uh, abilities were called into question. So a new Sharkboard Maker was created. And new Sharkboard creator walked into Aldi, bought all the cardboard boxed meats and cheeses, mm -hmm. pulled them right out of the cardboard, put them on the Sharkboard. And I'll tell you what, it looked very, very, very good. Yeah. Very good. And then as soon as it was announced, though, that all the shit on the board came from Aldi, it did seem like the hands of Tuscany yes. backed away from the charcuterie board. Billy, great work this morning, but here's a massive asterisk next to it. Uh, I do have the, the coveted Aldi chicken sandwiches outside that we were looking for before the show. It is now in the air fryer waiting for your taste. Uh, so Bill is an <laughs> Aldi you, defender. Oh, thanks, Hell Bill. Yeah, Bill. Bill is a massive Aldi defender, loves that place. Oh, yeah. Uh, Aldi comes from Aldiscat. Okay, yeah. there's nothing wrong with from Aldi. From Germany. Uh, okay. Brother Trader Joe. Okay, it is in the same uh, building as Trader Joe, just like Natural Light is with Bud Lights oh, beers. and uh, Penny Pitcher nightclubs are with other nightclubs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're all kind of in the same thing or whatever. But Billy is a big Aldi supporter. Uh, he said that there is a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich that it can only be found at Aldi. We learned a lot about a lot. Foxy came out swinging. Man. Aldi's his oh, favorite yeah. store. Nah, 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 I nah, mean, nah. he came out My absolutely. Whole point point up was here. this charcuterie board was fantastic. Everyone in the office absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. Mm -hmm. They loved how it looked. They also loved how it tasted. And then Bill had to come out and tell us, hey, this is from Aldi. And then a couple people turned on this charcuterie board. I just thought that made no sense. Well, no. It wasn't because we turned. It, you you were in there with a f Aldi flag yeah. marching around about it being your favorite grocery Hell store. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the COVID cowboy what? came in. <laughs> the COVID, no. By the way, that was a surprise heel turn. Nobody expected that out of a cowboy. Aldi's all incredible. discount. Uh, hour one's wrapping up. On the second hour, we have nobody. We'll see you then. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings South to 
College Game Day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. No, big go, blue go, Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not what we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hallelujah! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! Yes! Go. yes. He's being stick. Without this game, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend Kirk. <laughs> you look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. <laughs> was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. The Vinatieri School, they might be the Jackrabbits, but they're the goats today, ladies and gentlemen. South Dakota State with the win. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know, to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single one of our locker room. Yeah, so cool. this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. Not a bad little day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room with the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. <sighs> what an awesome opportunity. A couple people, one college kid. Took a shot at my swag. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We know. Oh, we know. We don't like that kid. I don't think a lot of people understand what swag is. You know, some of this younger generation thinks, you know, swag is just like you know, the clothes I wear or whatever. No, no, no. A swag is a mentality. Yeah. A swag yeah. is a mindset. I tried to tell this to some of the guys in the locker room this week. I said, swagger, which is what swag comes from. Swagger is a mindset. Swagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. <laughs> or that you have your shoes, you know, unlaced walking around with, you know, the, the you know, you got your new uh, Louis uh, fanny pack that you, you make sure it's not worn at your waist, it's worn over your shoulder. That's not swag. That's not swagger. That's fashion choices. <laughs> True swag is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And my essence on the field is that I feel like I'm a throwback player no, and I'm a tough guy. What I've played through, how I wear my stuff, you know, I'm kind of a no-nonsense straightforward. To yes. me, that's what 
swag is all about. You're damn all right. Like fake swag out there. I got my special towel. I got this. Or I got that. I got this riding out there. A lot of you guys are just posing. <laughs> McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. February 26th on this Feel Good Friday, hour two. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. The congratulations are flowing in abundance to me on my phone and on social media uh, for winning Rookie of the Year uh, in the wrestling world. Oh, best observer. I was uh, officially voted rookie of the year. Uh, it was it wasn't an easy thing to accomplish, no, but no. Uh, you don't just fall to the top of the mountain. No, you don't. Okay, mm. you don't just fall to the top, to the top, to the top of the mountain. Okay, you don't just fall to the top of the mountain. Uh, congrats to all the other rookies that were up for rookie of the year. I appreciate all of your work this year. Uh, I didn't see much of it, but I do appreciate being a part of this class alongside you. And by the end of this thing, I'm looking to uh, to, to to bury all of you. Okay. Yep. Hey, you. Congrats to them, though. Of hey, course. you're all trying to do the same thing. I understand. You had a great year. I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to drop down at any time unless I retire, which eh, potential. Maybe. We'll see. Who knows? It uh, could happen. And I just kind of, actually, if I was too right now, it'd be now. It might be huh. the perfect time. Would be ideal. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, we'll think about that later. That's a pretty big decision. Yeah, that's a pretty big decision. It has not crossed my mind until right now. You know, because when you retire after a Pro Bowl, you know, and leading the league, basically everything, and then, and then, then you retire there. It's because now forever, everybody's like, I could still do it. I eh, couldn't mm-hmm. do. It. Accomplished. Got to the top of the mountain. Saw the view. How you doing? Pretty good. Let's go and see. Let's go find another mountain. Let's go see what we can do yep. there with this one. Have I? I mean. Feels like I it. would be undefeated if it wasn't for those Chill. couple of things that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Would be nice to do it in front of a crowd, though. Oh, oh you're wow. right. You're right. I would have to tell these stooges to their face. Yeah. yeah. I at least have to experience that one time. Where at, though? Oh. Uh, you might as well. I would assume a rookie of the year will have options. Yeah. If I had so. to guess. If I had to guess, the think? rookie of the year will have options. Turn to MetLife, perhaps. Oh, you know, oh yeah. That never happens. Hey, maybe Whoa. we just run out our own stadium, huh? Ooh. Ooh. Staples Center. Oh. Wow. It's an arena. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Oh. Uh, speaking of shows, last night I watched the... Uh, uh, Doug Janowski, Jankowski just said part-timers should not be given awards. Part-timers, pal, I had to show them on my back for like four or five oh weeks my. this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's only 12 months. One eleventh or one tenth of the year, the show was literally put in a backpack that I was wearing, pal. Hey, part-timer. Hey, Jankowski, get a clue, hey, bud. Hey, hey, pal, fuck Come off, on. huh? Check the ratings, buddy. Boo. A couple times we beat him. The, um, <laughs> um, last night I saw a show. Okay. And I had heard about said show, but I had not seen said show until last night. Our guy, Jeopardy James Holzhauer, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. he might be the smartest motherfucker walking this mm-hmm. earth. Last night I watched The Chase on, uh, I think it was ABC maybe. Uh, not 100% sure which one. It was followed by a show called The Hustler, which is hosted by Craig Ferguson, who in my eyes, my opinion, the most underrated late night show host in the history of late night shows, um, Craig Ferguson, he kind of got fired after David Letterman left and kind of got replaced. He's been bounced around. I was always a big fan. The guy was unbelievable, just incredibly hilarious, incredibly hilarious. And now he has a show called The Hustler Game Show. Really good show. It followed the chase 
Really good show. The Chase, formerly uh, a game where you were trying to outwit a incredibly intelligent person at the top. His name was The Beast. He went to Oxford. He was a massive Englishman. Whoa. Okay, mm -hmm. massive Englishman. And there's like this this scale where you have to they get to chase you, and they're like uh, the Trivial Pursuit all stars up there. He okay. is the Trivial Pursuit goat, probably, if Mark I had to guess. Lebet. What's that? Mark yeah, the beast is what they called him, though. He was a massive man. Him, he's up there. So now they they brought it back. Okay, here we are. We're back. Uh, and it's uh, Ken Jennings, Jeopardy James Holzhauer, and that other guy, Brad, or whatever. Last night was Jeopardy James's turn. So they're, the other two are sitting in the back watching. They kind of rotate, I think, each episode who goes first. Jeopardy James, he, he, the thing about the show is the smart person at the top has to answer and then that person has to explain why they gave that answer, right? Mm -hmm. So they're both answering the same question. If they get it wrong, they stay there. If the uh, the chase, the person that gets it right, they close up. And then they inevitably kick people off the game if they catch up. That's the whole thing. But Jeopardy James was just explaining shit last night and that he was figuring out in like three seconds. He was like, well, I do believe that was happening in the spring. Um, Saddam Hussein was in the winter, it feels like. This seems like this is a summer thing. And it's like within one second. Jeez. And then the person gets it wrong, who is also an incredibly intelligent person, yeah. the, the person that's on this trivia game. These questions harder than Jeopardy questions, by the way. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. These questions, hard questions. Damn. There was a string of a couple easy ones throughout last night where I started answering them. I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm getting a lot less questions right there on this show than I do on Jeopardy. Yeah. So if that oh. kind of is that thing. Yeah. Jeopardy James, I, I tweeted out, our guy, he might be the smartest motherfucker on earth. He quote tweets it and he says, hey, thechasecasting.com. Oh. If you think you're smarter than me, come on and get it. <laughs> it's a great show. And trivia will be able to last forever, mm -hmm. by the way. Because I, I thought about that last night because The Chase is a trivia show and The Hustler is a trivia show kind of with also you're trying to figure out who amongst you yeah, I love the is the treasonous per you know what I mean so there's like there's that type of thing I, I absolutely got captivated last night by Jeopardy James's big ass brain are they talking shit to the uh, oh, yeah. person on nice. oh uh, yeah okay get out of here idiot <laughs> oh, so, oh yeah James is <laughs> James is burying people down there yeah but at the end there was all respect in the trivia community but during the battle it was in the, the final chase is what it's called uh, there's three contestants and they have to battle against the person each individually, and then they kind of store money. But if you lose and get caught, you're out. So it could go to three to two, two to one person left for the final round. Ooh. Last night, it was only one person, oh, wow. probably the smartest person in his state, if I had to guess, the person that was in there. And uh, going into commercial break, uh, Jeopardy James would go, uh, he's good. I think they would have me favored, though. And then he just <laughs> he goes into the, and he, he has like two minutes to catch the guy. He caught the guy, I think, with like, 20 seconds left or whatever. It was just like a victory dance on the grave last night. It was awesome to watch our guy just fucking. That's his job. That's what he yeah. should be doing. The one person was a Backstreet Boy uh, fan or whatever, mm -hmm. something like that. And two seconds later, now granted, edited probably, he said, I don't care uh, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Like, just right on cute with a pop wow. reference to Backstreet Boys wow. to bury the lady. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> Jeopardy James might have had his, like, uh, what's that called whenever it's like their greatest moment or whatever? He, might have, he pitched a perfect game damn near Ooh. last night on, on television. It was awesome to watch. I don't know if I'll watch next week for the other two bums from Jeopardy or whatever, but if Jeopardy James is up there full time, <laughs> I'll be there the whole time. It is going to be nice in two and three years when these trivia games start asking, you know, who was the rookie of the year in wrestling in 2020? <laughs> and the answer's going to wow. be Pat Matt. <laughs> oh, my God. I did show up in a trivia app. People have been screenshotting. Really? Nice. Yeah, and sending me that big moment. I would like to let you know, if you tweeted me that, know that you big pop out of me like when I saw it. I was like, fucking, it. I stood up, I think, whenever I saw it. It was a big moment. Well, what was it? Like, who was the punter of the decade in the 2010s? No, or? no. It was, um, that would be a good question, though. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, it was just like, who is this? It was my face. <laughs> it was a good photo. What was that game that took over the world that we were playing? Trivia Crack. Oh, uh, no, the IQ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, HQ. HQ, HQ, HQ Trivia. HQ, yeah. yeah. You win like, what, 100,000 Three o'clock every day would go really? live. That thing, that guy. Scott. Baseball uh, Channel now, maybe? I think the guy, didn't he? Oh, I don't know. Pass away? Didn't, uh, didn't what? somebody? It, I think so. Let me find out. That'd be like Blue's Clues. Scott Steve Hansen? Away. Well, I think that's is potentially what the rumor was like. Scott Rogowski. Did he pass? Find that. Let's have a moment of silence because HQ yeah. did have a run whether the guy died or not. No, he's still alive. Okay. Didn't did anybody to, from HQ die? Didn't have to do it again. 
Did anybody from that game die? Uh, no. Thank God. I, I looked up die in HQ trivia and nothing popped up. Okay, good news. I was lied nice. to you. I, 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 uh, someone died. What? I thought so. What? I, I mean, the, not uh, thank you. But. The, the co-founder. <laughs> there it is. Oh, man. I did say host as well, so Jeez I must have been why. Well, that's not what you told us. An though. accidental. Uh, so overrides. you're actually just spitting truths that fit your narrative to make you look good. No, no, which no. we can't have on this show. Uh, thank you, Dick. Let's have a moment of silence for the co-founder and the show that captivated everybody. All right. Game show's making a bit of a push, though. Hell of a run. Mm -hmm. Nostalgia. A lot of nostalgia coming back yeah. right now. What was Jeopardy James' story? Wasn't he a big sports gambler? Yeah, they called him the high roller. He was a professional sports gambler. Wasn't allowed. He's been banned from multiple sports books in Vegas or whatever. Good model. Yeah, he has him? algorithms. He has algorithms out there. He's like a super smart guy. They called him the high roller last night a lot, though, because, you know, in Jeopardy, every daily double, oh, yeah. he was... He was moving. High roller hall houser. Hey, that's high roller hall houser. High roller hall house. That son of a bitch would do. He, 25000 He has a sixteen to $17,000 lead, okay, and there's only two questions left on the board or whatever. Yeah, all of it, please. Oh. I'm, I'm not here for a long time, okay? I'm here to fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a night, $80,000 a night. God, that was awesome. What was his total earnings? Forever. Yeah. It was a couple million, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was a lot. Jeez. Definitely over a mil. Now that sports gambling is getting legal, too, he's just... Oh, and now he's the host of a, a game show? Oh, Jeopardy! Jay! Yeah. Do your thing! Good job, James. I wonder if he bet tails, too. Son of a bitch. <laughs> what does algorithm say about heads or tails? Well, that's what I mean. Because if, if it said tails, then, hey, we're on the right side of that. You know, that, that toss was shit. Yeah. Dog shit. No, everybody talks about how I lost 30000 on a coin toss or whatever, but nobody talks about how we got to that point. Said coin toss was a terrible coin. Not as bad as that, you know, the bush. The drop. <laughs> the bush push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The bush push. Not as bad as that one. But uh, when we're talking. The bush push. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> when we're talking coin tosses. Okay. I mean, get, let's let that get thing. It. It's yeah. a Super Bowl. It we it need a face. Super Bowl coin I, toss. I do believe they should be on a ladder. They should be elevated. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. I think they should be elevated. No, 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 no. No. So if the bush push ever happened again, at least would drop 20 feet. No, we got to worry about We got to schedule not to have another bush push. But that song <laughs> bitch has got to give that thing a little let bit it of a breathe. Like, we need come, some air it's under It's a Super that Bowl. Thing. Maybe catch it, flip it on your hand. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was come always on. a catch flip guy, yeah. but I do believe you can and potentially mm -hmm. yeah, do something mm -hmm. with that. So I don't need any of that. Imagine if heads hits whenever that happens. Yeah. I, I, I'm i looking to cut that guy's hands yes, off. For sure. But if tails hits when that happens, oh, I mean, he's going to right. make me happy. Yeah, if we're giving that guy a call, but, send him a bouquet. But there's a heads better nice. out there somewhere. True. You know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. a $30,000 one. Just give. There wasn't actually nope. this year. There's not. Would have been reported. What if math scores? When's their next game? When's Vegas's next game? I believe it. Ty is going to be so pissed by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. His guy. Ty, that, Ty is Vegas Golden Knight fan. Huge. What so from tomorrow the, at 10. It's so late. I will not yeah, be up They for get it. the late games. Because they're over there. Yeah. Mm. That time Which goes. also, you know, supports your point how it's pretty tough to watch hockey these days. Yeah. Hey, Kate, put that thing. Maybe let's go right in the middle <laughs> yeah. of the afternoon. I mean, the, the first the only, only next sport, four games at 10 p.m. with Pacific <laughs> Time. Not the only one. Math is their biggest start. You hear that interview? <clears> I've never heard, heard an interview like that with any hockey player ever in the history of hockey or interviews. And they got that guy on at 10 p.m. And I, can we not get him on prime time? Yes, Batman? please. What are we doing out here, Nick? Get him back to the pens, dude. Mike's dead back there. Yeah, his mic's definitely off. Who, next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought because I don't have my ears in, that's no, why I couldn't hear No, it's off. Yeah. East Coast bias. What are you going to do? Oh, okay. Okay. Nice clear. Mm -hmm. Hey, way to go, Nick. My baby, Nick. Dude, you delivered it both times Very as good. if it was the first time. Yeah. We have Penn's Islanders at 7 tomorrow night. Yeah, Penn's going to win by probably 4. Got B's Rangers tonight. Big combat game. If you want to win any money, go ahead and bet on them. Let's go to the phones. Pasta to score as well. Pasta? Pasta. 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 Who do you want to go to? Wisconsin, New York, Michigan, Illinois, South Dakota, Bloomington? Oh, South Dakota. Big do you have that come. video of South Dakota? I love South Dakota. Yeah. I'm going to post a video South from South Dakota. South Dakota I completely forgot about within the past year or two. South Dakota is the nicest state of all time. Nice. I had never been in that state before. Within six minutes of being in that state, the, the place is going bananas for me. That is maybe my favorite state in the union at this point. Yeah, that's one of my, my favorite ones we've done. Yes, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, aside from the places I've lived. 
Oh, yeah. Of course. Have to love this. Mount Rushmore up there. Bison burgers. Let's go to Seth, uh, South Dakota. What's going on, Seth? What's up, Pat and the boys? Hey, nothing at all, man. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I was going to ask. I think Dak Prescott is going to take all the uh, Campbell's Chunky Soup out of Dallas and get out of town. Where's he going? I think he's going to Washington. Whoa. In, in the division. That'd be interesting because he would, th- he would then have to become a free agent, right? Which mm-hmm. means he wouldn't have been franchise tagged. If he hits the market, I'll be intrigued to see the reaction by the NFL after coming off of that injury. Now, is he a good player? Is he a great football player? Ooh. According to the authority, Dan Orlovsky, good Shh. football player. Hasn't been great yet. Uh, and I assume that's because they haven't won really mm-hmm. any significant thing down there. So you can see how, if that's how you base your judgment of a quarterback – uh, in the grand scheme of things, on whether or not they win or lose, which is how we do a lot of things with Dak. If we do it in that particular case, you can see how the Dan Orlovskis of the world are very comfortable saying what they're saying because the Dallas Cowboys have not been able to really win anything worth a fuck at this point. Now, is that Dak's fault, though? That's when you have to start digging deeper into the question, saying, hey, situations might be situational. Can we talk about the Dallas Cowboys allowing an apartment complex to be built around their practice facility, allowing uh, mall walkers to stop in their film rooms alongside of them, uh, sponsorships, being able to run routes during practice? Can we talk about maybe the organization with its incredible business mindset, uh, America's team mindset, uh, the way Jerry's able to promote everything? Do we think that maybe the organization might not be set up for the most amount of success due to the fact that they are incredibly transparent with damn near everything. And every human that I have ever encountered in the NFL is the complete opposite. It's almost like I don't want anybody even hearing my cadence. If we can get that microphone turned down whenever I'm giving my cadence, that'd be good. Dallas is like, hey, come on into practice. Come see what we got going on. I'm not saying that's the exact reason why they're losing. I'm just saying that happens. What else do you think potentially happens that is a mindset not directly to win games, but for our team to be the most popular team and to bring in a lot of stars so is it Dak's fault that that has happened probably not but in the real world you judge quarterbacks off whether or not they win or lose he's coming off a massive injury I don't know how the market's going to be if he goes to Dallas now we're talking about Alex Smith fresh off of 17 surgeries comes back to Washington uh-huh. he said Washington wasn't bad at it at exactly. the beginning he said in GQ Dak coming off a of surgery I don't know if Washington's going to be bad about it and the thing with the Cowboys being so open I get it when you're building the team but you're you're one of the most popular teams in the league. You don't have to do that stuff anymore. I'm in close tr- the doors. Hey, I, I say that and people think I'm fucking around. I'm when I say that, I'm not fucking around. No, I, I honestly believe that. If you don't think in this billion dollar industry, uber competitive people, if they find out that you can get an office building <laughs> that overlooks Dak Prescott and the boys' practices. Like, you're just out of your mind thinking that people aren't doing it. I would assume that people are doing that. Now, I might be wrong, and I guess they have other practice facilities as well. Uh, but then even Zeke was like, uh, when we weren't playing well, there was no sponsors up in the – they have a nest for their indoor practice facility where, like, sponsors are – look. do you not know – I mean, I guess Jerry has to know all the people that go in there and know that their narratives might not be to potentially fuck them over. But any little piece of information that any of those people are stealing from practice could potentially hurt the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I'm not – saying that's why they've lost i'm just saying if that's happening what else is happening that maybe isn't in the mindset of we need to win football games around here at all costs which by the way a lot of people have in the nfl even though it doesn't seem like that with some teams like the Bengals, you know for instance mm-hmm. but, but the dallas cowboys it's wild to think that they haven't had success in so long and they're a team that is one of the most popular teams of all time in all professional sports. And it's like, what's going on behind the scenes, you think? And with how well that offensive line, the wide receivers, the weapons they have, if Dak does leave, does that become the number one spot or number one destination for other quarterbacks? Russ said, give me Don Dallas. You know what was interesting? Um, I thought about this whenever I went through Russell Wilson's agents, potential landing spots, if they were to approach – Seattle for a trade. It was Las Vegas, New Orleans, mm-hmm. Miami, Dallas. No, nope. Chicago. Bears, Chicago. Chicago. Cowboys, Saints, Raiders, Bears. When I thought about that, it was different than the initial reports of what the teams were because the initial yep. teams were Jets, Dolphins, blah, 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 just like the Deshaun Watson conversation. But you put him in three of those four teams, 
Well, I mean, now we're playing football. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Now we're now. We're, which one? Go which, ahead, which, Zito. Which teams do you think? Yeah, Bears. <laughs> Bears were the team I was talking about as not being the one. T- the one what? team. What? I mean, I just. You got Gruden, who's notoriously allegedly overpaid offensive yeah. guru. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have Sean Payton. Okay. Wizard. Here we go. Now with the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> yeah. you got Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Oh, big Mike. Jesus. Big, yeah, big Mike McCarthy. Only thing he has is smashing the melons. So, by the way, he has it though. He so, does have it. He <laughs> still has it. The Saints seem to be. If Russ ends up with the Saints, it's big problems. That's the only team that's a better position than what he's in in Seattle, in my opinion. Well, the Bears too. I guess there's uh, there's been a couple. Um, no, the Raiders. I'm sorry, the Raiders. <laughs> Uh, oh, I saw some pitcher, thoughts yeah. of the pocket mm-hmm. yeah. that Derek Carr was throwing. But their from. defense is awful. You know what I mean? Like Horrible. you're not going to a better team. But yeah, if Russ, a better Carr, offensive line is all Russell Wilson gives. He did have to sink. run that one time though in tours. So, oh mm. Derek, yeah. Well, also, but let's think about it. You got Rugs right, Darren Waller there, mm-hmm. Josh yep. Jacobs there. Mm-hmm. Got a good offensive line. Mm-hmm. I think that for Russ is bigger than. You know, I don't think he's looking at defense side of the ball because remember Seahawks defense this year for a long, long time did not play football well either. Now towards the end they got healthier and played better or whatever. I think Raiders potentially now, huh? Now the Derek Carr uh, Raiders fans are going to have to just swallow that one. I, uh, yep. I'd like to ask them potentially if you get yeah. Russell Wilson or Derek Carr, who would you have? I, I would be intrigued to hear what they would have to say. They'd say Derek Carr right now until you know Ryan Tannehill came in, just like Titans fans would say about Marcus Mariota. By the way, Mariota came in for Derek Carr and that, that whole thing. What were you going to say, Carl? Well, if he goes to the Saints too, like it's the most complete team now, but they're going to have to give up Ram Check and maybe even Michael Thomas, maybe even Cam Jordan. So if Russell goes there, that team kind of dwindles a little bit because of how terrible they are. With as the long as they got Kamara. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. That guy's a game changer. And Taysom Hill, because you can put him anywhere. You know? And they paid him. They paid Alvin Kamara. Oh, yeah. So now they they have a, a reason to feed him, right? Before he got that big contract, Michael Thomas became the guy, right? And the year before Michael Thomas became the guy, Alvin Kamara was the guy. Then Alvin Kamara gets into, like, contract year. Michael Thomas becomes the, the, the focal point of the offense, basically. Now, Alvin Kamara renegotiates long term. All of a sudden, Alvin Kamara now is the guy on that Saints team, which is very interesting alongside Taysom Hill, obviously. If you're Drew Brees and you, um, you see one of, your, one of the top wide receivers in the league and your wide receiver posting – um, that he wants to play with Russell Wilson, don't you just like, hey, man, I should probably hang him up and get out of here? <laughs> well, Michael Thomas literally played in every game that Drew didn't this year, and that was about it. No, and remember, the messaging at the end of the season was <laughs> Michael Thomas played hurt because of Drew Brees. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? Because he thought this was the end of Drew Brees. That was a, an actual message. Yeah. yeah. Look that up. Is he, need you to look that yep. up. So he there was a messaging at the end of the season because – Michael Thomas's season this year did not go how any of us thought it was going to, especially nope. after how incredibly talented he is with that offense, the relationship it seemed like he had with Sean Payton and everything. Then he gets hurt. Then he gets in a fight in practice. He gets suspended, even though he's an all-pro. Then he sits out a game. Maybe he wasn't even dressed for a game and this whole thing. And then at the end, it came out while well, he was playing because he knew Drew Brees, might. this might have been his last year and want to give it to go for Drew Brees, when everybody was thinking like, did he not want to play with Drew Brees? It was that whole situation was a fucking mind blower. Now looking back on it, 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 will Russ want to go to the Saints if the focal point of the offense is going to be the running back because he wants to cook so much more? Yeah, you but know? a lot of screens to Kamara. Oh, so just the dink and dunk. Hey, as long as I'm getting yards. <laughs> yeah. Hey, pad those stats. It's my legacy, you know. That's what hey, he said. Hey, Kamara, hit the end zone, legacy. dude. Right, let's get some phone calls. Let's go to Johnny in Wisconsin. Johnny, what's going on? Hey, Pat and the boys. Happy Feel Good Friday. How we doing? Hey, not too shabby. Happy Feel Good Friday to you as well, Johnny. Hey, I just want to say congrats to you as well for being Rookie of the Year and having the best fucking moonsault since Kurt Angle in 2003. Yeah! I appreciate that. Uh, Swanton as well. Shout out Jeff Hardy. I uh, appreciate everything you did uh, and put your life through so I could do a little something. Thank you, Johnny, for that. That means a lot, and it does feel good. Uh, the congratulations are just rolling in so heavy at hey, this point. Hey, I got, a, I got, a, I got oh. a Cowboys question for you, even though yeah. that guy kind of stole my thunder a little bit there. Well, are so, you a Cowboys fan? I, You know, I am. Why? I am, even even up here in the Wisconsin. Um, you know, Terrell Owens, when I was a kid, I'm about 20. When I was a kid, Terrell Owens, favorite player. 
dude's an absolute fucking animal. Okay, so, so that kind of got me on that train there, and I kind of, you know, just kept, carried on there. Okay, so a lot of people are fans of players, right? That happens, but they still normally have, like, a favorite team potentially, especially in this world now where you get to know a lot more players so you can like players and everything like that. When T.O. leaves there, there isn't a thought of, like, okay, I'm going to go to an organization that maybe, like, wins more more often than they do? Like You, have, <laughs> you know you know, see, at that point, I kind of had, you know, I, I trusted in the system. You know, I trusted in, uh, I trusted back in the day in Wade Phillips, and then when we got rid of him. You know, I trusted in Jason Garrett, and it's just never really worked out for me. You know, I had Ro- we had Romo back in the day, and um, we failed him about every way we possibly could um, throughout throughout history. So, uh, I think um, now that he's doing his commentating thing, he's, he's getting a little bit more success than he he would in our fucking trash no. can of a franchise. No, he's trying to bring that down as well. What do you, you want to talk about though? What is your exact question about the Cowboys, Johnny? Um, I'm thinking that uh, we're probably gonna have to wait until Jerry fucking croaks before we do anything positive in this whole this whole deal here. <laughs> I feel like a lot of them feel like that. <laughs> Jerry's always taking the blame. Is Jerry? Is it because he, of everything is, that we laid out there? He is the with Cowboys. The sponsorships and everything like that. Yeah, it's the way McCarthy's turned out. Kind of. Is it because he hired McCarthy? or? or well, you know, I mean, the I, team on paper, I feel like everyone thinks, like, oh, these guys are Every good. year. Every single year. Every year. It's unbelievable, the promotion machine that the Cowboys have. <laughs> every year, people buy in. I buy it. I'm like, me too. Zeke, that coming off of that year? Come on, Mike McCarthy. He was watching film every day. Mari Fluffed Cooper, his resume. Oh, yeah. my God. They paid Jalen. Everybody on the defensive the side. Lawrence. They got that guy that howls, Jalen Smith. I mean, let's go. <laughs> Everybody. They're going to do They're it. They're covered. And then they just stink <laughs> every Eggs. year. And you wait for years to get rid of Jason Garrett. Then you bring in McCarthy. <laughs> Well, and Jason Garrett wasn't – he's like a son to me. Yeah. Well, in Jerry's defense, too, McCarthy had that underground <laughs> every day. film lab. They every watched day. every single play real, from too. 2019. That was such bullshit. <laughs> what a setup. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, go ahead. But that makes you think McCarthy's <laughs> even smarter yeah. because, because he can hey, do that. If McCarthy can draw up a play to dupe Jerry Jones. Yes. Can this son bitch not drop some plays to make the uh, the the Philadelphia Eagles lose a game or two in the in the division? One time, <laughs> just one time, Mike. You only need eight wins. It's not like you need ten. I will say he did dive deep into the bag of tricks with that watermelon and that Jeez. sledgehammer. That I need something. That <laughs> yeah, you, remember Gallagher? <laughs> and it I didn't know how much water was in a watermelon. <laughs> we need the video. <laughs> Jerry's quote. <laughs> I did find it funny that Mike did tell me he was surprised by the amount of water in the water melon. That's so funny. Imagine Mike. busting that out with Rodgers and A.J. Hawk on the Packers. Just the... the, the, the the, the oh, I, me, if me, A.J., and Aaron were on the same team, okay? And there's plenty of other people, but these are three people that I feel like listeners and viewers now know pretty well at this point. Imagine us just you know, me going, oh, okay. Whoa. You need a bigger hammer. <laughs> Where are we getting these watermelons? <laughs> and then immediately after, obviously, after the commotion has died down, hey, let's talk about this. Did we travel with those watermelons? Yeah. How did those, are those local watermelons? How did we get those watermelons? Like how is, what's going on? And who who brought the sledgehammer? Mm-hmm. Can we get a bigger sledgehammer? How did we get here? Let's have a day, boys. They go and win though. That changed everything. We'll take another step too. The second time he did it, he had some players smashing them. So imagine mm-hmm. you, Aaron, and AJ up there oh. bashing watermelons with the sledgehammer. <laughs> oh, I would, imagine, oh. <laughs> I got the new Hocus on today, by the way. Oh! oh. oh. We're in a marathon. Those are the Miami Vices? Yeah, he's from the Iron Man. <laughs> Four ones. Yeah, well, they're yeah. men's shoes, but, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, let's not play uh, Unisex? Yeah, these are the Iron Mans. <laughs> Damn. <Ooh. laughs> Arizona Sunset. <laughs> Hawaii. Those thing. would Hawaii. absolutely <laughs> fucking crush at the local walking club. Oh, these <laughs> things are the runners, by the way. The walkers were yesterday. Please have a little respect yeah, for the mall walkers. Come on. Well, no, no. Anyways, I walk right up to the front there with that sledgehammer. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Follow that, Aaron. Good luck. Go ahead and give a speech, pal. That's what you're going to have to do. You think you put a lab coat on or something? Like- no, no. That's why I think the surprise of the water. I think all the boys... <laughs> Got blasted. I think all yes. the boys got blasted. Hey, first six rows, boys. Let's uh, back it Jesus, up. Jesus, Jesus. I'll tell you what. I, 
<laughs> the Cowboys are up for hard knocks, too, so it might yeah. be an absolute oh, yeah. lock Final at five. this point. Final five. Mm-hmm. Need it. Need it. I'm leaning pretty heavy on this desk. Sturdy. It's a sturdy desk. Well, I mean, I, well what I was AJ. saying was I don't think so. <laughs> it is only three little poles holding it up. AJ bashed it to shreds, too, so. It's got a Jordan up there in Michigan. What's going on? Michigan State's back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, go green. Go white. Come on. Oh, and big racist show. Good. How are you, Brett and gentlemen, on this beautiful Feel Good Friday? Hey. Hey. Hey, let's talk about Michigan State a little bit, huh? Hey, Tom Izzo is fucking back, baby. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm happy for you guys. Beat number four, Ohio State, last night. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Right. 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 Needed that for the resume yep. to get into March Madness, potentially. That's where Michigan State is. They're on the bubble, but that's a big win last night. Huge win. Shit. Last two, 48 hours, we beat two top five teams. We still got to play Michigan twice. If we get one of those games, I think we're in. Yeah, Michigan's back-to-back, oh, yeah. I think. What do you want to talk yep. about, Jordan? So, originally I had a football question, but I decided to have a hockey question because I want to learn more, learn more about the sport. Gotcha. That being Got said, <clears throat> why is it that fighting in hockey, relatively speaking to other sports, is not only accepted but welcome, and in almost any other sport that ain't a combat sport, people are throwing flags, get ejections are happening. Why is that the case with hockey rather than other sports? Hmm. I don't think I heard what he said. Why well, is uh, it accepted to fight in hockey and not other sports? Yeah, Because you, you handle your business, you handle your problem, then you stick tap and go in the box and come back out on the other side. It is the story of what it used to be to have a beef. It's actually the history of street beefs mm-hmm. where Shigami <laughs> is going to be winning uh, a big time title next week against the OG East Coast Street Beef Champ, Big Smile. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. It's kind of like how it used to be back in the day. I don't like you. You don't like me. I'm punching the face. You're going to try to punch me in the face. Hopefully, I don't get punched in the face. And then afterwards, we're going to set our swords aside and leave it there and move on. That's what hockey was. Hockey was like, hey, you took my maple syrup. No, no, no. You took my maple syrup, don't you? Well, I'm offended, don't Mm -hmm. you know? Well, my organization doesn't like what you're doing. That's not what it's about. Let's go. You want it? Huh? You want it? Mm -hmm. it. You want it? Huh? You want it? Get his jersey. And then you pick all your shit up and you leave your beef behind. You go into the penalty box and you fuck over your team. Then you come back out on the other side. Ain't that right? Five minutes each. You're both in there the same time. Don't fuck over anybody. And it's in, Ben. But I don't know why, but I do appreciate the fact that you're from Detroit, probably, and you're asking me from Hockey Town a hockey question. Oh, so wow. that's, that's a smart call. Oh, Don. I mean, if other sports want to fight, they got to get a penalty box to put the guys in after. Yes. Yeah, you know? lacrosse fights. Awesome. Holy if shit. There, if there was a box on each end zone oh, with the NFL players, lacrosse the fights. Make it oh, happen. oh, yeah. They drop Lacrosse, they just, it's, you're just. On hardcore oh, running shoes, the, yeah. just throwing balls. So is it just a bunch of Spencer Joneses out there with sticks beating the hell out yep, of each other? They exactly. got fighting straps. There, I mean, there ain't no call fire errors in lacrosse. No, 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 because no, the helmets. No. Smart. Hmm. But it's not year round, right? I mean, cross. No, you can go uh, outdoor, and then there's box across. Box across. Yeah. Dudes do. do people pay, uh, play only lacrosse? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's not like it's always. I thought it was always like a side. Well, for yeah. like I do this and I also places in the country where they play real sports. It is a side thing, but like in the Northeast and stuff like that. Yeah. Before the PLL, like guys who played in the MLL, they would have actual jobs. And then during the season, they would just after work, head on down to the field. Take care. Of I love business. that passion. You <laughs> yeah. know, I, I love that. You know, the, JP Morgan to lacrosse. The PLL <laughs> now has changed it to JP Morgan. By the way, do you know, learned this last night. What's this? The, uh, the guns that were used in the duel between. Alexander, uh, Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton and Aaron Burr, mm-hmm. sir, are in uh, the guns that killed Alexander Hamilton, by the way. Yeah, rest in peace. Aaron Burr, sir, uh, killed him. Rest in peace to Alexander Hamilton, by the way. Yes. Anyways, the guns that were used the there in J.P. Morgan Chase in uh, Manhattan. Learned that last night on one of those trivia shows. That's nice. awesome. Really? Yeah, you want to go get, check out the guns, go J.P. Morgan Chase and say, hey, I want to see the guns. 
That's a great little collector's item, huh? Yeah, I'd assume they're pretty expensive. I'll, I'll take them over to Rick over there at Pawn Stars. <laughs> yeah. See what he got I'll give me. you uh, 15 bucks. Oh, really? Well, bring yeah. that fucking mullet stooge in here to really give an assessment <laughs> on this. Thing. Yeah, fine, I'll give you one Charizard. I, I gotta card. make money here. I gotta you make give me money. One here. Charizard? I'll give you one Charizard. Hey, I saw Gary Vee talking about that oh, thing yeah. being a million dollar oh, card. Yeah. Well, this one's oh, bent yeah. at the crease, though, so you know, you gotta have to you have to take Don't that into it. account. How many Charizards are there? Is this like the uh, scratch off, like uh, the uh, McMillions thing? Is that what this is? You're saying it's a, think, it's a fraud? No. It's a scam? No, no. I know McMillions was a scam, but the idea at the beginning, before it was taken advantage of, was that somebody would get some fries or something, they pull it off, oh my God, it's a million dollars, but everything else is bullshit. Mm -hmm. With this Pokemon collection game, it's a bunch of bullshit, and then, oh my God, I got the prize, I got a Charizard, that's uh, worth a million bucks, is that how it works? So right now, in the world, like the, the best thing you get is a PSA 10. There's only 120 that says um, And you got to go oh, get Happy right. Meals at McDonald's. And well, this no, this is like back in the day, 1990s. They're, out, they're already out in yeah. circulation. Oh, they're amongst us. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like you open as a kid, you go, oh, I got a charge. That's pretty cool. And you threw in a drawer and forgot about it. That thing's probably worth so much money right now. Oh, so we got to start checking if drawers of all the nerds. If it's, if it's nice. Hey, yeah, you, hey, you Aldi stooges. Will you guys go? <laughs> hey, Foxy, what? Aldi nerd. Will you go? Will you go check <laughs> your drawers nerd. from your childhood years to see if we got any Charizards in there? Nah, Please. we don't do Pokemon cards. We sold those a long time ago in the Fox family. Uh, shout, oh, shout out, shout out, you guys. Uh, Billy's coming in now. Aldi, Bill, what's going uh, on? As far as your Charizard question, there's one guy that has like a massive uh, deal of them, and he tried to sell them on Pawn Stars for like half a million dollars. I think they appraised for like 1.5 this year. They didn't sell. Obviously, to Pawn Stars. Rick didn't buy it? No, that's where, like, Logan Paul got his, and that's what this whole hype's about and all that. He bought from this one dude in Las Vegas that has hundreds of them. One point he has five. hundreds of Charizards? Yeah. I, who is this guy? I'd like to get into the, the Mr. Charizard. Mr. I'm sure we have Charizard? We Papa Zard? Bro, I got a top <laughs> shot. Okay, yeah. they had a drop today. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody get them. Ain't nobody <laughs> okay, got them. supposed to be a drop yesterday. Didn't happen. One happened today. There was 140,000 people waiting to get a couple of these packs. I got a card. I mean, you got a Zion card, too. And Zion stock is... Yoli, 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 yoli. Let's go to the phones here. Hell yeah. David in New York, what's going on, pal? Hey, Pat. Hope you and the boys are having a great feel-good Friday. Oh, man, we are. It's only getting better now because of oh, you, yeah. pal. What part of New York are you in? I'm actually from, uh, from the city. Oh, nice. How is the city? Heard it's uh, kind of opening back up there for a bit. It was dead for a long time. Mm. People were fleeing, flocking out of there. Uh, it was locked down, obviously, for a long, long time. Hope everybody's okay uh, at this point. But is it opening back up over there? Yeah, I'd say it's definitely better than it was uh, a couple months ago. Uh, weather's getting a little warmer compared to all the snow we've had, so definitely looking up. Oh, and you stayed through the entire thing. A lot of people flee, right? Don't normally people leave the city in the summer, but... Uh, in quarantine, it felt like everybody I knew that was potentially associated with New York City, they were getting out of there as fast as possible. You held it down in there. You're a real New Yorker, huh? Yeah, I'm born and raised in the city, so I had nowhere else to go. Oh, Hey, I respect that, David. What do you want to talk about? Um, well, first of all, I've run several marathons in Hoka's. They're great shoes, man. You're going to become a runner after this. <laughs> wow. Come on. Wow. I don't know if I'm going to get into the, the marathon thing. You know, the first ever person that ran a distance in a marathon was a mailman or whatever. He died, you know. So <laughs> I just don't think that's a good idea. But maybe if I can get, you know, new knees. Shout out Bronny, by the way. Bronny had knee surgery. Hope he's okay. Yeah, right. to in high school. If they can get me two new knees, I'll go out there and run some marathons. Is even running. Um, so I'm a lifelong Jet fan. Ooh. Ooh. And with you guys talking about Big Ben earlier, I had to ask. Um, I'm just wondering what's the worst headline for a team to have? Your head coach sucking toes, a la Rex Ryan, or your QB slamming salami to the Lord? <laughs> Let's go to Juice in Arkansas. <laughs> you don't right. want to do that one? Those were wild times for Rex Ryan, I assume. You know? Yeah. Hey, those were wild times. Hey, man, to each your own. You know? Rex well, doesn't let's... give a shit. It's the best part about it all. Yeah. I asked Rex to get on Twitter or something one time, and he was like, uh, nah, can't do it. <laughs> and I was like, I think people will love you. And he said, I ain't got time for it. He literally is just in his own world, I think, at all times. Yeah. It's football. Let me get on TV. And then whatever his personal life is, let's just leave that as Rex Ryan's personal life. That ain't this type of show. See, the Ryan bros need a joint account because them mm -hmm. two together oh, yeah. on one Twitter account. Why don't they have a show? That'd be a great show. Makes no show. sense. 
Oh, the little, do you hear the little Rob and Rex? Rob, Rob and Rex. Rex. <laughs> the show that is better than sex. It's Rob oh, and Rex. Rex. It's Rob, Rob and Rex. Rex. Who knows what they'll say next? Let's go to Ott in Estonia. Ott, good to hear from you, pal. Hey, are you going to win an Emmy for that? Greetings, guys. Grammy. How are you? Ott, everything's great, fella. How are you over there in Estonia? Happy to hear Estonia still a place. Ott still kicking it over there. Great to hear from you again on this Feel Good Friday. Thank you. First of all, greetings to all the guys in the studio. And I don't know why people are forgetting MB Phil. Phil, hi. Oh, Phil, smart, by the way. Oh, yeah. Very oh, smart yeah. to say hello to Phil. Very yeah. smart to say hello yeah. to yeah. Phil. Yeah. Uh, shout out, Phil, by the way, CFO shout Phil. Uh, MV Phil, interesting. I mean, I would assume without Phil, we would not be able to operate. So I, I, I don't know if anybody's the most valuable. He is definitely highly, highly, highly valuable. Uh, so maybe HVP. Maybe HVP. HVP. Oh, HVP. Pat, no. Highly valuable. Phil, Phil is the man. Phil is the man. For the YouTube chat, Phil is the man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> HVP, isn't that also a uh, is that also a disease? Huh? <laughs> no, that's HPV. Okay. <laughs> Very nerdy. You want, have a good one. Human papillon virus. <laughs> now that one, uh, when I was in college, was a very popular one. That was the to one to talk about. Yeah, when I was going, I remember they were like, "Hey, make sure you get your HPV shot." Shout out HPV. Shout out it. No, don't shut. I guess yeah, HVP was really Let bad. it die. The shots. Shot, the shot down. Oh, I saw photos of it. Oh. HVP actually uh, spray paint method. High volume pressure. Ooh. Ooh. I think Phil would appreciate being that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Alongside a high volume pressure spray yeah. paint, like I Banksy agree. or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there was a graffiti artist that art sold for a hundred and some million dollars. Sure. Was it Banksy? What? It was not Banksy. How big mm. was the piece of art? Was it I don't an entire know, wall? It was... It was uh, Jeopardy James got it wrong, I think, last oh. night. Uh, maybe he didn't get it wrong. Maybe somebody else got it wrong. But it was in one of the trivia games. Uh, it was 103 million or 108 million. Damn. Like that. Jeez. It was uh, un. We have a break. Best squat. Smart. Hey, Who's yo, that? Best. Uh, probably pronounced it wrong. Besqui. <laughs> yeah, they, they said the name so fast. Yeah, it's whenever B -A -S -Q -U -I -A -T. it was the right. Q U I A T. So Bos why are you spray painting? Yacht. What's that? Basquiat. Well, why are you spray painting fucking bridges? You get 108 million dollars for your paint. Fucking uh, take your shit to a canvas and we'll sell this thing. Oh, it's Jean Michael Basquiat. Oh, uh, Jean. J yeah, he knows more Andre. JMB. <laughs> yeah, JMB. Friends with uh, HPV and HVP mm -hmm. out there. And, <laughs> and MAF yeah. is flipping on the other side of town there. Oh, boys. This goes to your argument, though, how it's like um, all fake. Like art? Yeah. Like, no, I think art is like, one How big, is that like? I think it's all one big money laundering operation. Yeah. Listen, and I respect the fact that art, you know, is to each their own. Mm -hmm. You know, I might see a throw up on a canvas and somebody else sees uh, every emotion that this person has ever. I understand that maybe I am not the right person to be talking about it. Uh, but you're never going to be able to convince me that a motherfucking thing that goes on the wall is worth a hundred some million dollars. No way. Especially after half of it gets shredded. Unless mm -hmm. that person is owed that amount of money from somebody. No, that's a Banksy one. That's not the same. That one I think is worth. Appreciate. If I could get the if I could get the the Banksy one that as soon as it sells it shreds in half. Yeah. Now that is one that <laughs> I would like because price. hey, that one has a trick. You <laughs> yeah. know, like that one has like a trick or whatever. You know, hey, this trick this thing does. Hey, J hey Jay, by the way, you know how to make three D graphics and shit. Yeah. People are selling those now as people pieces of art. Yeah. And one guy's making uh, a million over a million dollars his little graphic thing. Jay, what are you doing? Dude, have to look into that. Huh? I have to look into that. Yeah, legit. Yeah. Here we go, Jay. The one that the guy sold super political. <laughs> oh, is that right? So that potentially <laughs> is maybe I won't look into that. Yeah. It's <laughs> super, <laughs> super deep. How is this worth $110 million? Is that the the graffiti artist? That, that's just the I think that's the guy who bought it. I could be wrong. Hey, it's worth whatever somebody's mm -hmm. willing to pay it. Mm -hmm. Art moves. But for me, I hope I I'm never in debt enough where I have to buy a hundred million dollars. Like, it's war dogs. The second guy below that pay, like it was probably like ten million dollars. Yeah, but you gotta think though. That person probably Some owed auction. that person a hundred million dollars for something going on. Yeah. Never want to be in that position to have to fake buy art for a hundred million dollars. No thanks. Forty five minutes an hour two here. We gotta get to a break. Shout out to late night special band with this song Disco. We'll be back on the other side of the break. This is the Pat McAfee show, Friday, February twenty sixth. Let's test out this Sharon! 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 Proper footy.
Seems like it has a bigger sweet spot. That's the greatest sport on earth right there. Aussie Rules Football, also known as 40 AFL. My first time bombing in official shorts that are a little bit restricting. I think I lost a ball, to be honest. Might be a Lance Armstrong situation down here, but I can see why this sport is beloved, because those balls fly. Need to get down to Australia, meet up with the Magpie boys, and finish out this AFL season as Maybe it's biggest fan in America. Let's have a day. Pretty big breaking news. Oh no. What's that? Oh, 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 To a goddamn break. Can't happen! Oh, no. Can't oh, win with it! Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything I just said was wrong! <laughs> it would have been cool though if it was. Yeah, right. it would have been cool, wouldn't it? Diggs just got a darn Schefter. Oh my it was, god. It was at Ultra Weed Hater. Oh! I hate that! He got a He got a cockiner. What was it doing on my timeline? Bro, my cockiner's just juju at yeah. me. No more lies a day. I got bills to pay. It's my right to say when my days are done. I got wants and needs. I got hands that bleed. Cause there are my. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back. Hey, we have a new sponsor. Ooh, come on. Hey, this is actually pretty crazy here. Huh. Okay. Hey. What do we got? Purple is reinventing what comfort feels like, thanks in large part to the Purple Grid. Only Purple has the grid, a stretchy gel material that supports your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. Oh, a Purple Mattress is what we're talking about. Oh, oh. Sign me up. Because of how it's designed, the grid doesn't trap air. Air actually circulates and flows through it so you'll never overheat while sleeping, which is a massive problem. Huge. The purple grid also immediately flexes to support your position and bounces back as you readjust and move during the night. For instance, my wife last night mm -hmm. woke up in the middle of the night, went to the bathroom, came back, took a pillow, 
and just threw it at me. Oh no. Yeah, that's what it felt like, I don't know. I was abruptly woke up while something hit the side of my body Whoa. in the middle of the night. What was that? So I get, I pretty deep sleeper by the way, normally you can just kind of fend off that type of thing. So I wake up and I look over and I'm like, are you okay? You know, like, is everything all right? Yeah. And she goes, what? You know, like she's trying to fall asleep. I was like, I just got hit by like an 85 mile an hour fastball with that <laughs> pillow right in the head here. Jeez. She, no, I moved my pillow. So I had to readjust. Guess what? Couldn't get comfortable for uh, what? Another uh, 45 minutes to an hour? At least. She was snoozing, by the way. <laughs> snoozing over there. That pillow was just staring at me too the entire time while she was very comfortable. <laughs> she chuck it right out of there. I love her too much. You know, I would never think about, you know, potentially throwing that pillow come straight on, up dude. in the sky, have a high ceiling, and let that thing just come right on down. And then she goes, oh, where's that? Where it comes from? Oh, I think I saw a fall. I need the dog through it. It wasn't me. Chuck. <laughs> Anyways, the grid remembers all that stuff. And unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, that's why memory foam has craters and divots. And when you readjust, you're never going to get comfortable again because you might have been comfortable in that spot one time. But boy, we're in a much different time now. I just got hit in the side of the mouth with a 115 mile an hour pillow. Mm. I don't want to be down in that stupid crater anymore. The grid will bounce back with you. Hey, let's get comfortable again, the grid let's says. Let's go. Uh, try your Purple mattress risk-free today and get 10% off any order of $200 or more by going to purple.com slash McAfee. That's P-U-R-P-L-E dot com slash McAfee. 10% off any order of $200 or more. The Purple Grid is worth it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They are the only ones with the grid. A load of grid. Hey, this is a banger. I heard him come on. I heard Marty come in the middle here. Absolute heater. But you won't overheat. Listen to this song in your purple bed because the purple grid keeps airflow through there. You will not overheat like this song seems to do every time it comes on. Mm. Shout out to the Flame from Marty Vix called Manaki. Welcome back to the show. Fridays kind of stink, to be honest, but they are a feel-good time, mm -hmm. aren't they? Absolutely. Hell yeah. AJ Hawk will be joining us in less than 10 minutes, and in the third hour, we have Terrence Ross, yeah. uh, NBA vet for the Orlando Magic. We had him on last season when he was in the bubble. Incredibly entertaining dude. Uh, nine years in the NBA. Ain't not that it's... Yeah. Okay. So he's an incredible freak athlete as well. <laughs> Crushing it. He's an absolute stud, having a great year. Potential sixth man of the year right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, has a podcast. Uh, it's a very good podcast. Right now, though, I'm staring in the office at the boys here. Aldi somehow delivered uh, its chicken mm -hmm. to the office. Oh, yeah. And in the Aldi discussion earlier today, Bailey McComb has claimed, in defense of Aldi, by the way, because Evan Fox... In a surprise turn event, Diggs wow. yep. and Bailey McComas were leading a protest for Aldi's respect. Mm -hmm. We need more respect. Mm -hmm. Bailey goes, you can only get Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches from Aldi. You can't get them anywhere else. Mm. Those sandwiches have arrived. Zito will now be taste yep. testing. It has been cut into a quarter. <laughs> Yeah, can you show the chicken a little bit there, Zito, as yep. well, to the camera? Here's a full it, has a, it is a nice, thick, yeah. juicy piece of chicken. There. Yeah, but I'm sitting right next to one, Pat, and I just had a Chick-fil-A sandwich, and this thing smells like a hockey bag. There's okay. no chance I put my teeth on that thing. Yeah, the hockey bag thing is interesting because that is the type of boxing you will get at Aldi because they aren't, you know, it's not all the bells and yeah. whistles at Aldi because they're trying to save you some money with the same quality of food. Is that a Chick-fil-A sandwich there, Z? Um, So I usually go spicy, so I can't really compare it with that sense. But I would eat this again. It's better. There Potentially, it's better. <laughs> no That's way. better than a Chick-fil-A no sandwich. I had, uh, On record, did not say that. That is, no way. That is, that is better than a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Oh, Take uh, my this man, is, dude. Is fake. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Dude. I can ah. taste it from here. It looks great. The man has no shame. Oh, and Zito's <laughs> never seen a piece of chicken he wouldn't eat again. So I don't know why we're asking him. But I would eat this one again for sure. All right. Let's get... Tap it here. Shout out Aldi, dude. Oh my Shout god. Out. I might throw up. I did not oh, know. It smells Aldi. So throw bad. up, dude. Does it really smell like that? I'm not yeah, I'm not even kidding. That is I, terrible. I will go on the record as saying I could not eat it because my guts have been battling a Chick-fil-A spicy chick I had a couple of days ago for the last 56 hours. And I'll tell you what, this has been a 12-round yeah. bout. This has been a championship fight. So the thought of having another fried chicken sandwich today was not something I could do, but I appreciate yeah. you guys being honorable taste testers. It sounds like Diggs was potentially lying a little bit, <laughs> just strictly off of his stance earlier on being Team Aldi. There was some truth behind mine, though. You are lying. 
What do you mean? I That's what I'm saying. Oh, wait. What? Oh, so you Excuse automatically me? assumed I was accusing you of lying because you were so. lying. No, I was not. So you weren't lying. What is the question? <laughs> Pretzel. <laughs> Dan Wetzel. <laughs> Ten seconds left until hour two wraps AJ's up. Hour three is on the other side. AJ Hawk will be joining us. Terrence Ross will be joining us. More of your phone calls as we go into the weekend. We'll see you in six minutes. Trick shot challenge. Balcony. Shot challenge, half court shot. No problem. Half court, Foxy. Challenge into the bucket. By the way, I'm standing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hold on, let me go over here. <laughs> That's a good toss. Gotta watch behind it. All that shit. I mean, I'm not sure it's better because we're in a building, but I have to keep it below the lights, below our air venter thing that broke and caught on fire yesterday. Can't go outside because it's a torrential downpour. So let's give it a go. In Indianapolis, Indiana. With the shot. Shot challenge, four bags in a row. That's a corner. It's not a trick shot. Opening kickoff in that uh, Super Bowl you're referring to with the Colts, Hester takes it a crib. You having a little bit of a heart attack there? <laughs> Very bad, bad decision, Pat, on my part. All week up in Indy, we're practicing, and we know he's their number one threat. They don't have a lot of offensive weaponry. They went with defense and special team. So for the whole week, we're in Indy. We're not going to let him touch the ball. We practice squibbing to the corners, bouncing the ball, high kick, pop-up kickoff, punt it out of bounds. Everything to not let him touch the ball. Uh, we have a chapel service, and the chaplain talks about David and Goliath. And he says, hey, the reason David beat Goliath, he wasn't afraid. Everybody else was afraid. David ran right at him, threw it right between the eyes, and it was over. 
And I started thinking, we're playing, we're acting like we're afraid of Devin Hester. So I told the team on Saturday night, I hope we lose the toss. We're going to kick off. We're going to kick it right down the middle. When we pound him, they'll know we mean business. <laughs> it's going to be over. We kicked it to him 12 seconds later. He's in the other end. I'm <laughs> looking at me saying, what idiot decided to kick the ball to Devin Hester? But fortunately, uh, the, the last 59 minutes, the team made up for it. <laughs> Wait until they see the tone we set on the opening kickoff. Yeah, mm. yeah that was it. I that bet you Vinatieri was in there. Ah! <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to the show. Hour three, feel good Friday right into the weekend. I cannot wait. I'm sure you're happy about it as well. It'll begin immediately following this beat drop. Shout out to Swine for that beat drop. Um, we have some uh, upbreak, uh, updated news. Okay. Allegedly, apparently, our Purple, uh, our new advertiser, uh, Purple, which is a mattress company that has the Purple Grid. We talked about it Mm -hmm. in the last hour. The Purple Grid is this uh, uh, thing that goes on the mattress there that, that, you know, kind of moves alongside you. It it acts as memory foam whenever you need, but it doesn't act as memory foam whenever you have to move and get out of a crater that you potentially just created. And Mm -hmm. it also has air circulating through it because the way it's built, so you won't overheat on there. Uh, We told you to go to... uh, uh, purple.com forward slash McAfee to get 10% off any order of $200 or more and get into the game with the Purple Grid or one of their mattresses. And um, turns out that does not work. So no. It not. It's a 404 error uh, in the internet world. That's bad. There's no such thing. So they are working on it. We'll be back soon. Thank Thank God. Bed's still comfortable. Oh, yes. yeah. Still. Still working. Still still good. We can get you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. You can currently not. Okay. We. Coming soon. We do. Yeah. Error 504. I apologize. I was uh, off by 100. Uh, bad gateway. Oh, wow. Damn. 504, by the way. That's another class up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's a, a, 104, not pretty basic <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? 204, <laughs> 304, 304, 404, 504. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, this ain't going to work because <laughs> joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hot. Hey! Sorry, AJ. We got caught up there. Uh, I never. It's never happened before. I was. I was shocked to see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, real quick. Oh no. Oh, Shinigami. Shit. Shinigami. Yes, that guy is amazing. <laughs> This show is stunk anyway, so we might as well just fucking completely, let's just, <laughs> might as well completely derail this. Hey, Shinigami won me over as, he's maybe my favorite yeah. fighter in the game right now after yeah. that conversation with him yesterday. After, if you're listening on Sirius, I apologize, this show does suck. I understand that, but we had a conversation with a man named Shinigami, okay? And that means the Grim Reaper in Japanese. He is a street beefs fighter, which you can find on YouTube or any of the social media. He is a man, we don't know the age of him. He is this <laughs> mystique of a character. He wears a gi, he does karate. He called us from his bed bedroom which is gothed out those are his words not ours uh we talked to him yesterday i am a massive fan. i am in the shinigami game who is not only a fighter also a father and i think a husband to rachel your thoughts aj on what we learned yesterday here on shinigami <laughs> i mean the dude he lives up to the moment i mean i know there was a lot of build up to this fight but bam this this dude 
He knocks him out in what, probably 12 seconds here? Yeah. I a think maybe check. less than oh, 10 seconds. Oh, every time. Every he was time. going to finish him. You see Shinigami was going to finish him, though, too. <laughs> but, I'm, I, you know, the fight, the fight was obviously the first thing that brought me into Shinigami. Yesterday, though, learning about the man, that was electrifying yesterday. Can, can we find a way? Maybe we can send Foxy to do, like, a UFC <laughs> embedded on Shinigami leading up to this next fight. Don't, hey, I am already working here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I am already. I, I Yesterday, you know, after that conversation, I was like, got to get involved here. God, this is something I would like to, you know. Sponsor him. Can we sponsor him? Already ahead no. of you here, pal. Mm -hmm. Now we're at the point of placement on Gi, mm -hmm. where we're going placement on the Gi. <laughs> yep. I mean, we are deep in the conversations right now. Uh, also, potentially, you know, a video, a little docu-series of him. Kind of because I don't know if we'll be able to fly there uh, necessarily because, um, you know, it's like in a few days or whatever. And, you know, co the whole thing, you know, don't want to do any. I don't even know if we're even allowed to. So we are trying to get into the Shinigami business. I would like to let you know we are trying our absolute best. I'm happy you and I are on the same exact page. though. It was immediately following that thing. I mean, I feel like people probably are, are viewing Shinigami like people – are seeing Bitcoin pop up in their, their timeline all the time right now. Like, I better get in on Shinigami right oh, now yeah. before the masses all jump on board. Oh, yeah. <sighs> the masses are going to jump on board. Oh, yeah. Um, Quick. Did you watch our conversation with Mark andre Fleury earlier at all, and are you a hockey fan? I saw a little bit of it uh, on the clips. Did, he seemed like a good dude. I know he's a great player. He was incredibly relaxed and casual when he was talking to us, and I, and I started thinking to myself during the conversation, like, has anybody in the history of this show exceeded expectations more than Mark Andre okay. Fleury in that conversation? That's, I mean, Aaron, obviously, but like Shinigami. Shinigami, you're right, <laughs> yeah, Shinigami. Yeah. But I'm talking Mark Andre Fleury during that conversation. I was in the middle of it. I was like, I could never, because hockey players never talk to anybody. Hockey players are the most guarded media. They do not talk. Everything's the same answer. Uh, the sport of hockey is like a very much like, hey, uh, go humble. We do this. Now, on the ice, there's chirping everywhere. You know there's great personality somewhere. But hockey almost like has this code around it where you don't really – you don't do that outside maybe because it might be dis I don't know if it's disrespectful. Is that other view? I like I, I I honestly don't know why, but you rarely see any personality coming out of the NHL, right, Nick? Yeah, I think it's just avoid any type of off ice distraction at all costs. It's only about what you're doing on the ice. Well, off ice. But the <laughs> come on thought <laughs> of him coming in and just absolutely killing it was awesome. I am um, I'm happy I bought a guy that guy's jersey way back in the day. Yeah, how many years has he been playing now? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I, I he said a couple times how old he was though. Like he said, uh, it didn't happen until I turned thirty or twenty five. He started to have to stretch. He said he said he never stretched by the way until he turned about twenty five, which is sounds ridiculous because you know the goalie position you have to. There's a lot of movement and crouching and sliding and splitting and everything like that. But it is surprising the lack of warming up that a lot of people do that are professional athletes. And then all the old heads, though, all the older heads are like, hey, you just wait. You just that, that, That's kind of like a common thing. It happened in football, at least where I was. I didn't warm up at all. And there was like Vinatieri and everybody was like, oh, just wait, Ju just wait. And I never made it to Vinatieri's thing. But they were right. <laughs> I mean, at some point, the body just kind of hits you. Mark said it was when he was 25. I have no idea how old he is now. He's 36. 11 years. He's drafted ball. in 2003. Damn. He looked like he was yeah. fucking 19 years old. Great. It'd be Great hey, it would be tough being a goalie. I, I went to I think it was a playoff game when the Blue Jackets played Pittsburgh when Fleury was in Pittsburgh and the whole arena he I think he gave up like three goals in a, in oh. one period. The whole arena is just chanting Fleury. Like we have video of my daughter. She was like one chanting Fleury with the whole crowd. <laughs> That's how. I'm like man, this this dude's kids might be in the arena right now. This would suck. Like they're not they're not happy about it. It's the opposing fans. <laughs> This dude's kid might be here, but he's just standing there. Terrible night. All right. Just a terrible night. His team is, you know, meters ahead of him. He's just basically on his own little island and the whole place is just pointing at one thing. It is one of the only positions in an arena that that happens. Now, I guess technical free throw. 
that get you kind of get True. like isolated mm-hmm. like that. There's other things like that. And I guess uh, basketball has those moments. But in hockey, I mean, you're right. They do get isolated by the crowd in both a positive and a negative fashion, obviously, what you was talking about. But the flower chance that used to go in Pittsburgh whenever he was heating up, also awesome. You got the highs and lows. What were you going to say, Nick? There's an old school hockey quote. I think it's by Jack Plant, the old, I think he's an old Canadians goalie. He said, how would you like it at work? If every time you screwed up, a big flashing red siren and goal horn went off and 18,000 people booed you. (laughs) Or cheered. Yeah. 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 It's one or the other. Chanting your name. It's like hockey's. uh, Can Nick explain, like, what? Hockey's so weird to me. I think in that same game I'm talking about, Flurry got pulled after the next goal he gave. Like, they'll pull their stud veteran 10 year all star and bring another guy in if just having a bad night. For the exact reason we were just talking about right there. Because it's like, ah, this guy is just going to get murdered for the rest of the night. There's no way he's going to be able to recover, right? Yeah. And a lot of times it's not even his fault. It's the guys in front of him who aren't playing a good enough game to protect him. And he feels isolated back there. That was a big thing with Patrick Waugh. Basically came off the ice, demanded a trade after getting shelled for like seven goals back in Montreal. But and it's so mental, man. If the you don't wall? have it that night. Yeah, he left. He, they, I think they left him in there for eight or nine, and then he what? saved one. The crowd, like, fake booed him. He skated off the ice, went to the coach, said, fuck you, I'm never playing for the Habs again, and never went back. They won a couple of cups. What a weapon. Went to Colorado and won, like, two Stanley <laughs> Cups. What a weapon. <laughs> yeah. He gives up eight. He fucking... Because everybody's watching, because as we are talking about, this yeah. person is on their own stage or whatever. Everybody's watching him. Helmet off, okay? <laughs> Fuck you. I'm out. Did he give any to the... No. Oh, well, he kind of oh, did like a... He did like a, he did like a fake wave when, when they, when they like... They cheered him, but it was like jokingly, you know what I mean? Oh, The man. old Bronx cheer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I think he got in a fight when he was a coach too. He's a he was awesome. He's a great goal. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Is he a GM now? Oh, yeah. Drop the gloves. I think he is AJ. I'm not sure where though. What about Barassa though? I mean, Tommy. Oh, Tommy B. If we're gonna talk about fucking goalies, back Ken Reggett. <laughs> what a stud! We had a kid at our high school, Ken Ryder. He was a good goalie. <laughs> oh, Kenny Ryder. Yeah, he was a stud. <laughs> Did he make it? I don't. I do not recall. I was, I was actually kind of friends with him. He went and played junior. Oh, okay. He went. And, he left school. Yeah. My friends, that's not real. We never hung out. Like, I, in in the hallway, hi, how you doing? Hey, what's uh, up? We're friendly. You're like, hey, Kenny. Good. Kenny. Is this, de- is this deck hockey or, or uh, ice hockey? Ice hockey, yeah. <laughs> you got to remember HVP, highly valuable Phil. He was a stud on the mm-hmm. ice as well. We had some hockey players. RJ Umberger, he was a Columbus Blue Jacket. For, yeah. Our high school had some hockey players. Now the kids, I guess they stink, but I, I guess Phil's the uh, the coach. HVP is the coach. Hey, let's get those boys skating, huh? Let's <laughs> <laughs> Too more cement? No, I, I think I think it's going to be a problem to find kids that enjoy playing hockey whenever there's a lot of other options. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to become something that is difficult for the sport. It's pretty regional. Like, there's certain areas that are big time. But all these, these NHL teams have, like, their junior program. I know, like, people, I talk to hockey people around here, the Blue Jackets have been here, I don't know, 20 years. But they have all these young Blue Jacket Maybe programs. Pens. And they said, like, hockey's getting a lot better in Ohio just because of that. Yeah, because our guy, R.J. Umberger, he left in high school. He didn't even graduate, really, from our school. He left. Kenny did the same thing. I think, I think sir, we had another dude yeah. to try. Like, we had a bunch of Ian, I think, did. We had a bunch of guys that, like, left. They just went and did high school somewhere else. Yeah. And they would come back in the summer and, like, pop in, like, for a weekend. It's like, oh, hey, you back now? No, I'm back. I'm leaving tomorrow or whatever. It's like. Oh, so you're not from here anymore. You're, you're, <laughs> you're gone. You live, somewhere, yeah. you live somewhere else. And they do from their family. They stay at like uh, other people's families over Host there. Family. It's a full commitment uh, in the hockey road over there. Was Nick the one telling me there's some, I know they have stay with host family. There's a guy that's married to like his host mom. That's... Hey, I'll tell you what, when they got the dangles oh. uh, <laughs> in the mitts, you know what I mean? Those boys. They got top Ched, you know what I mean? I don't know that one, but I like where it's going, AJ. Where did you see this at? Browsers? Yeah, all right. All right. No, it's, I don't it's like a real thing. No, it's a real thing. It wasn't like... <laughs> all right, stop. Exactly We're not going to Shoney's either. Shut the fuck up, okay? That's not, it's not happening it's Perkins. today. It's Perkins. It's pretty good. It's got a juice in Arkansas. <laughs> juice, good to hear from you again. What do you want to talk about, pal? How's it going, Pat? Hey, I not- just want to give a shout-out to the YouTube comments. You know, they're awesome. 
So uh, well, I do well, want to ask you real quick, though. I uh, mean, that is TBD. <laughs> Hold on one second, Juice. I definitely, I, I definitely love the commenters. Hey. Oh yeah. I appreciate the activity oh, in there. Yeah. But there are sometimes I look down there and I'm like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. So definitely shout out to the YouTube commenters. I appreciate what you're doing, but. Hey, there, there's some that dance in there. It's like, yo, 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 come on. We sure. cannot have that be associated yeah. with uh, with this show. Come on, that this show is a good time. Hey, this show is a good time. Yeah. Hey, we like everybody. I mean. They're all talking about their favorite browsers now. See, that's. That's AJ. That's okay. That's that's AJ, that, that, that's, you do whatever you're going to do, all right? If you want to. That's fine with me. But the, there's some stuff that gets in there where I'm like, hey, we can't have that. Keep it out. They can't have that but shout out to the comments oh you're in shout out now hey shout out shout, shout, shout out, out. out. I appreciate shout you out. juice what do you want to talk about pal i just wanted to know uh what are what are the chances that russell wilson is going to get traded to the cowboys and if he does how many super bowls are they going to win all right juice good question juice i think a uh, cowboy fan if i do recall right from his first call or my, might have been a guy from oklahoma i do not yeah. recall but um if Russ goes to the Cowboys, it's going to be tough to win the Super Bowl, obviously, still, uh, because the way teams have been constructed around the league at this point, it's going to be difficult to beat a few of the squads there, including Dallas, even though they paid a lot of people. It feels like that team is, I don't know, I assume I'll buy into the fact that they have a roster that will win a Super Bowl at some point because it happens every fucking year with the Cowboys. But Russell Wilson definitely helps their team get better. I don't know if they win a Super Bowl in the next four years. Do you? Uh, the next four, nah, I don't know. I don't know if they're built for that. They got to figure out their offensive line too, and get them back to what they were. Like when, when Dallas was, I mean, I don't want to say back in the day, but not that long ago, their O line was the best offensive line in the NFL. Like I, I would say it all the time. Diggs is very perplexed. I mean, he picked them this year. What's the difference? What's? Huh. <laughs> oh yeah, you our did. Quarterback, our quarterback got hurt. What do you mean? Yeah, but uh, so I, you don't you want the quarterback. So if he's back, then they should be able to win the Super you Bowl. You think Dak is yeah, better than Russ? I mean, I might pick him. I didn't. I haven't made my pick yet for next year's Super Bowl. If you all right, <laughs> Dak's gonna be there. Where does Dak go if Russ is there? Seattle. I mean, play, that's a, it's a blockbuster. Fullback. Let's see if it, you think it could actually happen. So the way that would work: thirty-two million going out, thirty-seven million coming back. Franchise tag, sign, trade, plus another pick, probably. Uh, I would assume, and that would tell the world a lot about Dak and Russ there yeah. if something came alongside of it, how both those franchises view the whole situation. But, uh, ooh, that would be very interesting <laughs> to cover. So, Pete Carroll knows that he's going to be paying more for a quarterback that he thinks less of. That's why he demanded that another pick come alongside of that quarterback. So, he's an interesting... Oh, we could talk about that forever if that happens. That would be great, you know, stir the pot bullshit controversy that we oh, could yeah. just talk about, which is kind of a cesspool. Maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. Let's not do that if this happens, okay? okay? Let's make a promise today. We will not talk about that happening if uh, the Seattle Seahawks demand a draft pick alongside Dak Prescott. We cannot make that a toxic situation. Okay. okay? Writing it down right now. Thank you. Tell mm. Siri, please. Yep. Oh, what are they doing? Do not bring up all that stuff that he just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russell to the Cowboys would be insane for media, though, AJ. I think it would be a win. Don't you think like, that's something that would entice Jerry Jones, I would imagine. Like, think of the news that would be, and Jerry would do his best to keep it Headline news throughout the whole season. Hey, listen, you want to get on the Russell Wilson watch post? Come on, sign right up. It's a newsletter, and you'll get a chance to watch him practice every day with a full live stream camera that oh. you can bring yourself. Okay. <laughs> be, I'm in. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> got to figure out that secondary before they figure anything else out. Well, they can't play all 80 plays, okay? That's right. <laughs> That's right. You remember that from this past season? Is that when you knew your team had no <laughs> shot? Is that the case? Like, the fact that a guy, if that enters your brain as a player, like, yeah, it's not great. But it happens. <laughs> but the fact that you say it to a publication or to somewhere out there publicly, that's what makes it a little bit uh, concerning, I guess, if I was a coach there. You know what? Um we want our athletes to tell the truth, you know? Mm -hmm. Then that guy tells the truth, and we just bury him for it. Transparency. That's what, that's what everybody said. And it's like, we do we do want the truth. And I appreciate him saying that. But with that being said, 
there are consequences now. Now, now we got to deal with consequences. And I understand that's probably why cliches are always the given answers, because the consequences to cliches have always been the same. The reactions to new statements, you know, that haven't been tried or tested, we don't know what those reactions are going to be. So I potentially think if we do mock this particular statement, it'll cause other guys to maybe keep being a shell, but they're going to be it anyways. So mm -hmm. that was a that was a wild comment to say in a press conference. I mean, I just just an absolutely wild wild comment. But I respect the fact that he said it. I just would like to, I would like the world to know that. And D Butt said it on here. He was like, "Look, of course, this is kind of a well known thing. If you're the left corner and they're running toss right, you're not gunning it across the field, but you don't come out and actually say that." All right, we have to get to a break. Terrence Ross will be joining us on the other yeah. side. Uh, nine year NBA vet currently playing for the Orlando Magic. Yeah. Um, that should be he's a good conversation. AJ, you ever met this guy? I have not. I'm excited. I know you you talked to him a while back. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Loves candy. Yeah. Does love candy. Oh yeah, we shipped him candy. Yeah. Will barrel. It wasn't a will barrel. Oh yeah. I just remembered that. They I confiscated wanted, the will barrel, that's what happened. I wanted a wheelbarrow of candy shipped into the bubble from the show. You know what I mean? Because we yeah. weren't able to get it. We weren't able to get the full thing in there. It just no. got a little bucket that was the size of my hands here. That was just big. They had like a size restriction? Why couldn't you? What if you would have packaged it up, put it well, on a pallet maybe? That's, I mean, I don't know. I had a lot of those thoughts. We should have done it. We should have put more effort into it. We should have. Damn it. We should have shipped that. Yeah. Next playoff bubble. <laughs> Ship that's it to the NCAA bubble. It's going to be right down the street. All right. We'll just deliver it. We could deliver hey, it. Hey, this is for everybody. Hey, we, we just thought. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys playing for free. Everyone but Michigan State can have some. Oh, True. Uh, they got to make oh, yeah. it first. That's your oh. Hey, that doctor. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's bringing the whole story right back up. Yeah, I, I just want to let you know that I think a lot of people, for, we did not, but yeah. a lot of people had forgotten about what had happened what, at Michigan State. Now it's all yeah, kind of coming back, back up. up. Yeah. Go green. I mean, come on, guys. It's Feel Good Friday, and we really had to bring that up. Well, it's well, your fault. Well, it's your fault. Go green. Go what? Oh, Good how Lord. dare you? This is the Pat McAfee Show. Jesus, oh, we will clean wow. some things up on the other side. Uh, Terrence Ross will join us. We'll see you on uh, about four minutes or so. <laughs> why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. God, right. and if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need 
in that hole I have by competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively, and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. McAfee at the top of the key. Five seconds, four seconds. Step back, three for the win. It's good! Smash! It's not Sunday because the bank is open! Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to said show. Shout out Jay, by the way, for that screaming countdown he has to do, <laughs> which, by the way, is probably his least favorite thing to do on earth, I'd assume. Shout out to you, Jay. Hi, boy, Jay. Hi, boy, Jay. Hi, boy, Jay. Jay. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here, Friday, February 26th. AJ Hawk and I are here, and we're about to be joined by a guy who's in his ninth season in the NBA, probably going to win sixth man of the year for the Orlando Magic, hosts a podcast that is named after him. He's unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, Terrence Ross. Yeah! 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 Ross, what's going on, dude? What's up, guys? Hey, how you doing, man? How's life? Last time we spoke to you, I think you were still in the bubble or just uh, almost near the end of your bubble run. You had a couple weeks, uh, maybe a month or two of freedom there. Now we're back in the season. You're playing great basketball. How's life been? How do you feel over there, T. Ross? Uh, tired, man. I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> I just got back to New York last night, like 3 a.m. So I'm just kind of waking up. So, man, it's been a. It feels like it's been one long season since the last time I talked to you, but it is. It's a lot, man, but, you know, I'm, I'm sticking in there, hanging in there. How different is it right now? I guess you were in the bubble just a couple months ago, we feel like. But playing now, yeah, you're not technically living in the bubble, but you're still – does the game feel the same, like actual game day? Uh, I mean, a little bit. I mean, we used to – I mean, every game day, we used to go to, to like, the gym for shoot-around, and we haven't done that all year. Uh, we're doing a lot of walkthroughs in the hotel. We can't really leave the hotel when we get to wherever city we're in. Um, I mean, there's a lot of COVID protocols, so we're kind of just trying to maneuver our way around that. But it's a different feel than any other season. Uh, it's nice to be back in the arenas where, you know, some teams have a little bit of fans, some teams have no fans. But to be back on the road is, is refreshing because being in a bubble was tough. Um, whenever you're going and traveling around, and it, they, they're talking about how – the bubble they're having, you guys aren't even allowed, I think, in the hotels to even, like, see each other. And, and you talked about how you're doing uh, walkthroughs instead of uh, shoot-arounds. Do you think there'll be anything going forward that'll be cut out, like, when it isn't? Like, for instance, the daily workouts at the – or the workouts at the arena, you think that'll continue after this whole thing? Or do you think there'll be anything that'll change because of this uh, entire protocol situation? Um, it depends if, uh, you know, if we, if we, if players start getting vaccines, I know they start asking the players cause I know they're working with the player association in the league, you know, working with getting the players vaccines. So they're asking players right now, like, Hey, if you, how would you feel about getting the vaccine? You know, if that meant that you don't have to, you know, test in the morning or you don't have to do, you know, A, B and C. So, uh, I don't know where a lot of people stand. <laughs> but I know that if that happens, it could change, you know, a lot of what we're doing and eliminate some of that, all the hoops we have to jump through day and night. So uh, hopefully, you know, they ease up with it. I mean, as long as it's safe. But 
right now it's it's super unclear and uh i don't know we still trying to figure it out what do you think the chances are of the the, the players association and the nba and like I guess coming together and saying, yeah, we will, like all the players will get vaccinated. Do you think there's a good chance that could happen? Man, I don't know. Uh, the, you know, with this vaccine, it's very tricky. A lot of people have their own, you know, opinions about it. Oh, own, you're, you don't say hey, it is quite a, there are yeah. some, yeah. Yeah, there's no middle ground between a lot of people yeah. and everywhere, everybody's everywhere right now. Um, so I don't know, man. It's it's. I don't know. It's everything is super unclear. Nobody knows anything. We're all just going with the flow, I guess. All right, let's talk about uh, the sport of basketball that you're playing right now. Yeah, you're playing really good basketball right now, man. What are we doing? How are we feeling? Body's feeling good. You know, you said you're tired right now. You've been resting great. You've been dieting. Anything different? Or are we just doing the same old, same old here? Honestly, uh, I mean, just besides the fatigue, I feel surprisingly, you know healthy i'm not banged up like our team has been it's been a few times this year where we've only had seven to eight players on an active roster to like play a game because everybody's getting hurt left and right we have guys falling out uh getting hurt here and there so whew, i'm surprised like I'm, I'm fortunate enough to to make it through this far without getting any injuries so i can't complain over there uh for the most part man i just i'm sleeping a lot more i'm sleeping like constantly like I feel like I'm just sleeping through the day when I'm not, you know. Do you have mono? Hey, I, I'm no yes. doctor, but you sound fatigued. You're sleeping all day. Are you losing weight? You might have mono. <laughs> I pray to God it's not mono. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope to God it's not mono. Uh, damn, man, I don't know. It's it's tough. I mean, I'm just – we travel so much. They have this on a, a shorter season, so our to and from time is, like, crazy. Like, we've had probably, I think, the first or second hardest schedule – of any team in the NBA. We've had the most back-to-backs uh, out of anybody in the NBA. Uh, so, man, we are – I mean, we're almost done. Like, next week is the break. So, I mean, we right there. So, we have – you know, we get guys healthy again. But, uh, whew, man, it's a grind right now. It's a different type of grind. I, I, I can feel for you. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's amazing the way you're playing, both offensively and defensively. It, it, it makes me – question something like going back in the day i remember people would say oh the nba players like they don't play defense these guys don't yeah. play defense it's so easy to score so when i was like 25 i got to go to my first nba game and actually sit courtside and mm -hmm. two minutes into the game i was like there's no chance anybody on the planet can score <laughs> but like how do you ever score a point is what i was i was watching because i was like these guys are playing so hard i felt like like do you think there's a chance like let's say a solid high school basketball player Six three point guard. Could he score a bucket in an NBA game? Probably in like garbage time, like the last couple of minutes. <laughs> you put him up there, he would have to be an exceptional, exceptional. Like we would all know about whoever this six three, you know, high school kid is. We, would, if he was good enough to play in the league, everybody would know. But uh, actually, no. So I sorry, I take that back. There is a kid, uh, Amani Bates. He's in high school. Uh, he might be Ohio? a junior, Michigan, but. Yeah, for the last few years, he's been regarded as like the best high school player, regardless of class. He's like, he's like a, a mini Kevin Durant. If anybody could score in the NBA, I think it'd be that kid. Um, you said we know we would know about. It does feel like the basketball community, and I assume it's because of AAU and these yeah. the tournaments. It feels like the community of people that. Like, you guys all know each other, right, growing up. Like, oh, that guy's going to go to the NBA. That guy's going to be in the NBA. Even as, like, teenagers and college, everything. It feels like that community is very, very tight. Am I right in reading that from the outside? Yeah, um, for the most – yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, for the most part, we've been playing each other, you know, especially some of the guys in the league have been playing each other since, since grade school. Um, I've known guys since, you know, ninth grade, tenth grade. And now I'm in my ninth year in the NBA, and it's just crazy how far that you know a lot of us have come. So yeah, I feel like for the most part, when you're when you're you know doing kind of arrogant and cocky, but when you're good enough and you're you know that you're gonna be elite, you know who those other guys are, and then you kind of build those relationships with them, and then you know ten years down the line, you guys are still playing, you guys still have that history. So it's definitely like that, and even even more so now because social media is such a big thing that like a lot of these kids are just like famous before they even get to college oh yeah it's just you know everybody knows who they are they're like you know made celebrities overnight like these high school kids have verified check marks and 
a million followers on Instagram just because, you know, they're, they're dunking and just doing crazy stuff. So and it, it, the community is a lot tighter. Everybody knows everybody. But, I mean, to get to this point, and you definitely are going to know, you know, majority of the people around your surroundings. Um, I wish I would have played basketball. No. <laughs> I'm too late. Right. You're a kicker this. ball, and now you're, you're a pro wrestler. You did it right. Hey, by you're the way, right. appreciate the congratulations today for uh, Rookie yeah. of the Year, Tyler. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that was big time. I seen that. He's going flips from the top rope. It's, uh, yeah, Pat Max is out there kicking ass right now. I love hey, it. I appreciate you, T. Russ. You are as well, Bob. And whenever you uh, find time to speak into a microphone more often, your podcast, you crush it as well. So uh, I appreciate you a lot. What do you got, Connor? Yeah, Terrence, a big conversation right now on the internet is about uh, the logo changing to Kobe. Do you think that's something that's going to happen and that's just inevitable? Um, I hope so, man. I really do. I, I grew up, you know, Kobe was like my idol growing up. So I'm all for that. Like, it, it makes sense. I mean, Jerry West has held it down for however long he's been up there. So it's like 88 fucking years he's been in the world. <laughs> but for the most part, bro, Kobe would be, he's an icon. And, you know, even just after his death, his impact just on the world in general has just, it's, it's gone even up and beyond past what anybody thought. So I feel like he should for sure be the logo. Um, now, that conversation then, uh, would go to, well, what should the image be then? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, because there yeah. is some um, mm -hmm. incredible... Now, the one Kyrie put out there was him dribbling, but I don't think that is the... There should be some sort of... Do you have in your eyes what you think it should be then, the image? Um... I mean, it's tough, man, because... What if it's where he's standing there with the ball? Like, what if the <laughs> yeah. ball is like an inch from his face and he just stands there and just stares <laughs> it down? That moment, or how about he's standing at the uh, free throw line with his Achilles blown out and just... All well, no, right, <laughs> one thing, yeah. Honestly, you can't go wrong. I mean, Jerry West is literally, what is he doing? Just like half a dribble, somebody call him at the worst moment for a basketball <laughs> picture. So anything you can do can't be worse than that, so. I def maybe it should just be him walking off like a silhouette and just walking off with his hand up like he did in the last game. Boom. Yeah, just that'd be dope. Keep it right here. It's a memorial after that. That would be dope. Um, let's talk about NBA uh, top shot here. Listen, I'm in the game. Hey. Hey. I'm in yes. the game. Hey. You guys aren't on it now. You guys should get definitely get into it. Um, <laughs> it's the biggest thing in the NBA world right now. I feel like a lot of people are catching on. This morning, I was waking up at like 10 o'clock trying to get in the line for this drop that they had. So. Did you get it? Did you get in? No, no, I did not. I was close. We didn't uh, either. Not really close, but close than a lot of people. There was 200,000 people in the waiting line, and there was only 10,000 packs available. And so they had the drop for like, you know, you can you can stand in line for the first 30 minutes of the drop. And then after that, when it's like 30 minutes is down and it's time to open the shop, they randomized the 10,000 people selected from the 200,000 people standing in line. So I got pretty close. I got to like 50,000, which is better than being anything else, but <laughs> it was too far. I didn't get anything, so now I got to wait for next week. Uh, I didn't get a pack, obviously. I just wow. I, I went the lazy way of just buying a Zion thing. We had four people in there waiting as well yeah. alongside of you. Uh, just kind of – it seems like kind of pissing in the wind you guys are just basically kind of doing there. But I hope you guys eventually get in there sometime. The, it's amazing to me how fast it has gone, though. This thing is taking – you said it's the biggest thing in the NBA world. How many other players are talking about it? Uh, are you guys seeing this as a potential, you know, maybe investment, financial Ooh. opportunity here? This is a good idea for the players to potentially own this shit. Yeah, man, this is – it's, it's changing the, the way that, you know, people interact with – players when it comes to sports memorabilia and when it comes to you know cards you know anything like that because it's all taking place online now so and now the nba has <laughs> licensed it so that you know, these moments with which you're essentially you know paying for and opening the packs for are you know trademarked by the nba and there's apparently you're the only person that can have that once you pay for it so it's pretty dope and the way that it has value is just like man like any you, it, it makes it fun because now you have to watch the games you have to watch what's going on in the nba world because you might have a player that gets hot you have his card and now his his value is skyrocketed up now that card that was going for 20 bucks is now going for 200 bucks and you can sell it for however much so it's a fun game it's like it's like nba wall street and <laughs> <laughs> crazy over it right now um there's a lot of money being tossed around so uh it's fun for everybody well uh we're in the game you know our 
our NTF game is uh, <laughs> through the roof. You know, uh, no NFT. Our NFT game mm-hmm. is just absolutely taking off. We appreciate you taking time today, Terrence. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, stay alive over there, dude. That has to be grueling. As you were explaining, like, the back-to-back, shortened season, travel, land at three, how you doing, walk through here. That day, That is a – you guys live, like, a rock star lifestyle while having to be incredibly athletic as well. That's insane. Yeah, man, it's a new day and age. We just got to roll with the punches. I got to go to the gym in a little bit anyway, so – you, hey, let's put up some shots, huh? Hell let's yeah. put up some shots. Yeah. Points. Ooh. <laughs> Little pop a shot. Always. Hey, I uh, <laughs> I go chest pass off the backboard. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. One just like the right off the backboard, just drop in. Yeah. That's what is your move? You go shot probably because you have a great shot. Yeah. Push. That's the only way it counts. Well, what about a bank switch? Because I got a lot of those. Yeah, we don't count those over here. But it didn't hit the rim. You know, it was strategically placed. Nah, you don't need the backboard. Swish, no swish. Yeah, but do you know, it's almost harder, they're saying, to bank swish every single time. (laughs) Way harder. harder, Could you... Swish or no swish? (laughs) People are saying the bank swish is harder, though. That's what people are saying. For the bank shot from deep, we're not doing that. Swish or no swish? Terrence, the bank (laughs) swish, if it was on top shot right now, just going like this, pal. It, it, it started maybe yeah. five bucks with the way you were speaking about it. But then once people and scientists start looking into how hard it actually is oh, yeah. to do, that thing's going. <laughs> Terrence, also another idea here. <laughs> we, need, um, we need to start missing the, the second free throw on a more regular basis, getting our own rebound, putting it up, yeah. three-point play every single time. We need that to start happening a little bit more. Go old the stats. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> My man, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Here you go. Woo. Hey, he's awesome. Cool guy. Nine years in the NBA. Mm-hmm. That's a long time, AJ. Yeah, it is. I, I thought you were going to ask him to try to bank one in uh, in a game, like bank a free throw in for you. That is. Oh. Hey, is he still on? And then uh, you could buy the call whatever back. it's called. Can we call him back? Can you oh, call him back? Buy the bank shot, top shot. Oh, oh my God, call him. Yeah. Good idea, AJ. So, okay. How easy is it to sell these things? Like, if I say I buy one right now and someone wants to offer me 100 bucks more, can I sell it right away? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not in a selling game right now, okay? This is uh-huh. a hold, hold the line type situation yeah. right now. Hold the line. Hey, uh, Terrence. Yo. Hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> Long time to talk. <laughs> hey, appreciate you answering again. Uh, I just want to let you know, if you um, if you bank swish a free throw, okay, anytime this season, uh. Hundred thousand dollars to a foundation of your choosing. Ooh! And I'm gonna buy the top shot. Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah, it's so easy, huh? Gotcha. Hey, we're either gonna count it or we're not gonna count it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chance yeah. 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 Woo. Okay, thought. so goalie scoring. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot easier. Bank swish free throw. I mean, let's go. He gets fouled in garbage time. Why not? Why? We busted out first game. Oh, my God. <laughs> Plays tomorrow. Save the jazz. Yeah. Save it's the gonna jazz, happen Mitch. What's that, AJ? It's going to happen tomorrow. Like, what do you mean? The guy's, the guy's a wizard. Like, everyone in the NBA can shoot lights out. Oh, you don't think he can magic. bank one in with ease? Whoa. Yeah, but the free throw, I feel like, is something that they, like, you, you – it – it breaks the greatest of men, that free throw line, at certain times. Yeah. I mean, there is full-on situations. Russell Westbrook put, threw up an air ball a couple weeks ago, one of the best basketball players to ever play basketball in the history of basketball. We're talking bank swish here. We're not yeah. talking no, yeah, bank front but, rim in. No. We're talking Westbrook bank, bank swish. swish. He's still on. Yes. Terrence, bank swish. He's a 90% free throw shooter. Mm. Mm. Uh, he's a 90 percent hey 90 percent from the free throw line it's a layup for you come on yeah, it was all swishes though you got that backboard factor it can hit that back rim and pop out and you're like a dummy exactly <laughs> well, that's, that's, the, uh, hey, that's, 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 the point. that's the whole that's what we're talking about here you know what i mean yeah. well when there's pressure on the line it's, just, it's a little different all right we're just I saying can go it- out there and just do it on my own Hey, I made six free throws. Yeah, the seventh one's going off the glass. <laughs> there you go. Well, I just want to let you know, like, you have all season to do this. This doesn't have to be tomorrow. It's for charity. Yeah. Hey, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Yeah, do it for the kids. Do it for the kids. You're right. Do it for the children. <laughs> hey, I can do how about this? <laughs> oh, no. I was about to say fourth quarter. Game within. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. 
Oh, imagine the commentators. <laughs> what this is like a big game. <laughs> Bang. It's over. Oh, all right. Good luck out there, Terrence. We appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hey, just think about it. You know what I mean? I got it up here. I got it up here. Uh, Terrence Ross. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Team Ross. <laughs> all right, let's get some phone calls. He on the whole time. That's why he was thinking. He was trying to yeah. Yeah. Uh, ponder again. Shared. You guys kept talking about it. I didn't want to hang up on him when we just called him back two seconds after we. Oh, oh Jay, okay. Jay, super nice guy. Nice Jay. Jay. He's probably pissed off about that, though, because he had to act like he was. <laughs> no, I think he was enjoying the whole conversation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's tired. Hey, the question, though, the question we could have asked him, like, let's say he gets two. It's not a one-on-one -on -one situation. He gets two free throws. He tries to bank the first one, and it just goes horribly wrong. Does he attempt to bank the second one? <laughs> yeah, because you might as well at this yeah, point. Yeah, after. <laughs> Yeah, he gets then, they, on then they show a clip. Well, hopefully the networks that do it are show a clip of this show and they interlude the, you talking about this and offering Bro, 100 grand. If he gets fouled on a three, it's like the 10th frame of bowling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? Like he's just going to have to hit one of the first two there. Then he can give it a go. It's easy. Like. Yeah. I mean, if he really <laughs> cares about his charity. Fast, too. <laughs> Let's go to John in Illinois. John, what's going on? They're in like a playoff hunt. <laughs> yeah, boy. A to the J, how we doing? Not too shabby, John. What do you want to talk about? Uh, Mr. Rookie of the Year, I saw you cut a promo from a plane last week on NXT. It was incredible per usual. Thank you. But I'm tired of watching Stooge Boy himself, Adam Cole, run around for two hours every single Wednesday. The Rookie of the Year cannot just stop now. He's got to go win a title so he can put it on that organized desk every single week during the show so the wrestling community will erupt. This is my guy. Mm-hmm. Shout out you, John, in Illinois. Shout out, shout out. Adam Cole does stink, doesn't he? He's the worst. Oh, worst. Scumbags. Let's go to Dan in New York. What's going on, Dan? Hope we can pander as well as John. Oh, thank you. He was telling the truth. Oh, you hear me? Hey, he was. He was. Like, it's a great compliment to you. He was telling the truth. He was telling exactly the truth that you want to hear. I hear a lot of truths on a daily basis, okay? Some much more pleasant than others. That one was very pleasant, okay? So, Jesus, let me live in it for a second. Dan, what do you want to talk about? Hey, man. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing well. You, the boys, everything like that. Um, hey, we look at a guy like Tom Brady, who's easily the most winningest quarterback in NFL history, easily. arguably the best quarterback, and you look at his salary and you realize he's not even getting paid what you think the best quarterback in the league should be getting paid. My, my, my question for you, and I'm curious your opinion on this, should that set a standard to other NFL teams to say, if you want to be a Super Bowl winning team, if you want to have a legacy, you need to underpay your quarterback and then overpay your weapons and your offensive line and your defense. And as a Cowboys fan, I'm thinking about that a lot with Dak right now. Somebody should be saying that to him. Okay, yeah, he's played for uh, so long, and his, uh, the money he has earned has been massive. That's why. Now, granted, he should have made much more money. We oh, all yeah. agree. What he did for New England was very nice of uh, uh, Tom, but his situation is much different than a lot of people's. Now, granted, people would say, well, how, isn't $100 million enough? And it's like, I mean, I was never in that position, so I don't know if you should ask me in that particular case. AJ uh, took all whatever $175 yeah. million dollars they offered yeah. AJ, yeah. though, didn't Insane. you, AJ? Come on. Yeah. What, what the thing about happens, if you take an under market value, like there's not many agents that are going to want you to take that. You Then you kind of screw the other quarterbacks that are up in, up in line next for another deal. So Tom Brady is a very different situation. When he was with the Patriots, obviously he was paying, get paid much less than he could have gotten probably from somewhere else. But hey, like, Everywhere is not the Patriots, though, either. And the NFL PA isn't going to be thrilled about I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. But I, I, I thought Andrew Luck was going to potentially do it, by the way. Yeah. I thought Andrew Luck felt like one of the guys he, you know, I don't want to say he, he was, he came from a pretty established, he did. He came from a very comfortable family. Not that that changes anything. His dad was just a very successful person, as was his mom, his whole family. Uh, and he seemed like a guy, you know, very casual, rode bicycles, like he did not dress flashy, did not do anything. When his contract was up, especially after the, you know, the ass beating he continued to get on the field, I thought there was a chance that he was going to be one of the guys who goes, you know, I'll take it, just protect me, let's build this team up or anything like that. Uh, and then like two weeks or three weeks before 
his contract was announced, Jim Irsay tweeted that I'm going to pay him the most money anybody's ever been paid for. And I was like, okay, so I guess there is not a conversation of that happening. And when I mentioned that, a lot of people came to me and were like, Andrew Luck would not have been allowed to do that. I was like, by who? And they're like, the NFLPA, the age. There's just like no way. His, his friends that are quarterbacks around the NFL, they would all be very pissed off. Tom Brady's at like his 10th contract at this point. Those first guys, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where you kind of just got to do it, even though everybody knows that team could be better if you take less yeah you can now all you can do is try to like structure it the right way to where you could still find a way to fill in those pieces i think that's what they're trying to figure out now like how do i pay of my my franchise quarterback and structure it in a way to where it doesn't screw us after the first couple of years maybe patrick mahomes style mm -hmm. first couple of years is next to nothing then it's all there and they'll probably kick the can down the road whenever they get there and figure that out but he's they're like hey we think you're half a billion dollar quarterback is that cool we'll figure it out as we go yeah okay we'll be able to build the team okay let's do it uh what were you gonna say oh i mean the walter payton man of the year is not even doing it and then he's you know bummed about how his offensive line's not yeah. great it's like hey russ okay. you, you want a better offensive line all right all right let's go to clint in indianapolis indiana what's going on clint Hey, fat boys. A to the J. How are we doing today? Hey, not too shabby. How are you, pal? I'm good, man. In Arizona, living the dream. Hey, I got a Arizona. question, Pat. You've done a lot. Ooh. What's that? Arizona. Arizona right now, 75 and sunny. Oh! Wow. wow. I thought I said Indiana there. What do, you want to talk? What, what do you want to talk about, Clint? Hey, Pat. Well, I just want to say, you know, you've done a lot in your life. Uh, Hunt Pass is kick national champion. Uh, Division oh. one kicker. Fiesta Bowl champion, pro bowler, Super Bowl starter. But I wanted to know what in the absolute hell happened on that fake punt against the Patriots. That was just dog. All right. Jeez. Oh, come on. On today of all days. Come on. Come on. Unbelievable. This guy. I was not part of that fake punt, even though my name was right across the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Jeez, did he even say Rookie of the Year there? No. no. He didn't even announce the Roy. Today, on this day, new All title. All he said was Super Bowl starter. Sorry. Kicked off the Super Bowl. Well, I mean, dude. both kind of accurate, I guess. I was like the golf guy at the first tee. I also got a Fiesta Bowl, you know, record as well. Yeah, I do. Thank you. They they, they posted that mm -hmm. a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. Hey, who, who votes on Rookie of the Year for wrestling? All the most important people that have the biggest brains. No. No. You would, you would know them, AJ. Yeah, you would Notables. never understand. Yeah. I'm just asking. Do you know how many people vote? Actually, you know what? The interesting thing is, AJ, you should potentially celebrate as well. And Nick, I was kind of taking this in an incredibly selfish fashion because it was just my name there. But, I mean, you boys were a pretty massive part. I mean, weren't you? I mean, you, yeah. Darius, yeah. Nick, Foxy, behind the scenes, you guys are Rookie of the Year, too. Nice job. Hey, you guys are Rookie of the Year, too. What's up, Nick? Woo. Yeah, I got COVID tested, so I should, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm part of it, right? Am I part of the Rookie of the Year? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was in the arena. Yeah. In the ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Banged my knee super hard one time in the practice jump up. And even Triple H like, uh, one of you just blasted your knee. <laughs> I, I tried to play it off. Like, we practiced. We were going to jump up when they were coming. And I jump up and just, dong, boom, hit my knee so hard on something. And I'm like, yeah, just kept on climbing. Just got up there and didn't say anything. He knew right away. <laughs> By the way, the thought of Triple H going, hearing that sound and turning it around, be like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to assume it was you, AJ. Okay. I just held, I just held it in and acted like it was. I don't, yeah. Yeah, hey, I, I guess know. it was that guy. Limping on the side of the ring, <laughs> holding on. Because uh, I did that, right? That was, uh, Brock Lesnar did that, right? Brock Lesnar does the jump up. It used to be magical. And as soon as I got a ring, obviously the first thing I see is like, can I, can, can I do that or not? So that was literally, the, I was like, this is the only way I'm getting to the ring now is I'm just jumping up to the top there or whatever. And I, I did that. And Darius, whenever we were about to do that, or whatever, D-Butt, who's going to be on Monday or whatever, he was like, hey, I'm going to jump up on that thing now. I, I'm a, I was like, hey, don't get caught. Now, if you because if you get hit short there, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a little bit, there's a, there's a rope there. Don't, and it's a pretty good box jump. It's a pretty... Yeah. It's a pretty healthy box jump if you have anything in there. It's not. I did not know you almost bashed your face. That is, that is awesome news. That is great to hear. That makes me feel much more athletic. Also very sorry. And that even more so earned you that rookie of the year because you took a bump in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You almost blew a knee yeah. out in this whole thing. Yeah, you're right. You know, I feel pretty good about that. I should. I just needed stretchier jeans. I should have maybe worn like tights that day, not jeans. Yeah, you got to wear the jeans that I wear. You know, they're basically like yoga pants, you know. 
Let's go to Billy in Michigan. What's going on, Billy? What's going on, boys? Happy Feel Good fucking Friday. Hey. Shout out AJ Cigars. Shout out Rookie of the Year. Shout out Connor's Glasses. Shout out Dick Shout Pat. Out. Shout out Gump's Beard. How are we doing today? Hey, Zito, we're fuck got, you. Huh? Got, oh, what are you talking about? Everybody's Whoa. good, actually, Billy. Oh. Zito as a whole. What did AJ say? Wow. He said Zito's gout. Oh, I thought you said. Yeah, that too. How are we doing today? Everything's great, thank you, Billy. What do you want to talk about? What did, to- what did Tone think I said? Um, I want to talk about what uh, AJ and Pat is. Um, AJ's been Aaron's best friend forever. Uh, Pat is Aaron's new best friend. Who do you want to see in Green Bay if there was a free agent wide receiver signing? Great question, Billy. They're going to have to sign somebody, you know, because yeah. although they have absolute weapons in Green Bay, it would be nice to be able to have the artillery that the other high, high, high teams have in the NFL. Um you know, sign T.Y., go get T.Y., mm. maybe Godwin, go get Godwin up there. T.Y. May, hopefully comes back to the Colts, by the way. I didn't say it yesterday, but there's a lot out there. Uh, this show is wrapping up. The week is wrapping up here on SiriusXM. AJ, do you have anything to say to the listeners? SiriusXM Channel 82, Mad Dogs Sports Radio. Congratulations to the, the new newest rookie of the year, Pat Mack. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah! Uh, shout out. Shout out me. Shout out you. Shout out you, AJ. Shout out, boys. A big thanks to all of our guests this week. Uh, big thanks to all of the listeners. Chris Mad Dog Russo with Mad Dog Unleash will be next. Our show on Monday hopefully will be better than the one we just had. It is doubtful, though. When you have this weekend, I hope you have the greatest weekend of all time. We'll see you on the other side about six minutes until Chris Mad Dog Russo. It's Friday. Nailed it, dude. Just fucking absolute dinger time. Diggs, what do you think I said? Zito said it. Yeah, he thought you said gut because I am overweight, AJ. No, you're First off, you're not, Z. You know that. I'm three bills. Yes, I am. Okay, well, that's you saying Brock Lesnar's almost 300 pounds. He's also eight inches taller. (laughs) (laughs) Well, put put Pat's uh, shoes on. You'll be there. (laughs) (laughs) What do you have today? These are the Iron Men. These ones are sick. Yeah, yeah these are good. Hey. Take a look. Miami Vices. These ones are electric. It's hard to, hard to keep them in frame when he stands up with those things on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> look at those things. Did you? Nice. Why? So those sunset? are different than yesterday? Did you, or it looks like someone just airbrushed him. That dude that makes all the cleats for the NFL guy. Oh, uh, Mosh. <laughs> Is that a Hawaiian sunset? Oh, my God. you catch me mid-walk? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, those God. are the runners. Those aren't the walkers. These are the Iron Man, Iron Man. Go what? run as why? far as I can. <laughs> why are you getting, like, what's with this fascination in these? With the Hocus? Yeah. Just because I, like, mocked them so heavily on AQ, <laughs> okay. and then AQ fired back, like, you want to know who? And I was like, all right, so I'm going to try these out. Now, what am I going to do, not wear them? I have, like, four pairs sitting at the house. Have like, to. He's a I'm shoe guy. Have to wear them. Huh. Yeah, those those look better than yesterday's. I don't have anything that would match the shoes, but I will say the, you know, for how tall they are, <laughs> with the platform there, you know. You feel like you're gonna fall off all day, like you're on still. <laughs> yesterday I fell off the back <laughs> twice, <laughs> once in the morning, once at night. But these ones, there's not a lot of room in the actual container. The shoe. The actual, yes, yeah, the shoe part. The shoe. Of it. Yeah. So the top of my toes are getting oh you're jammed in yeah oh, pressed man. down yeah it's not as because oh, i got man. fat it's like you're walking downhill all day long you know what i mean what's that it's like you're walking downhill all day long no it, it just feels like my toes are getting you know what i mean just pressed like, the whole time push man. a little bit it's a it's a stretchy fabric because these are the iron man yeah. but it would be nicer if there was maybe no that's why i normally wear air force ones because they have the big cart uh, compartment up there in the front you know just let my feet breathe a little bit you know what i'm saying aj yeah i guess i don't know if i'm gonna be getting those anytime soon do you yeah. have fat feet? I think if you, I have very fat feet. Yeah. I think I have pretty fat feet. Yeah. Are they as mangled as your hands or no? <laughs> no, I think honestly, I think my my feet and my toes look pretty good. Uh-huh. You know, I think so too. Thank you, thank you. I'm not talking about yours. I'm talking about mine. Have oh, I seen no, your feet? I figured you're talking about mine. <laughs> have I seen your feet? I don't, have you? I, don't know. <laughs> I have. Am I supposed to, was I supposed to show you my feet? Well, then why the fuck are you saying thank you? <laughs> Because you were complimenting me. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, uh, but my feet should be. I've lost toenails, you know, where it's turned like oh, black yeah, or whatever and yeah. falling off. Like I've had blisters all over everything. Um, and for some reason, they don't look as terrible as they probably should at this point. As the majority, 
just walk down any NFL training room where they're taping dudes' ankles for games. You will mm. puke before you get to the third person. <laughs> Those toenails are just the wide receivers' toenails. Oh, they, that's boom, non-existent. Like, oh. yeah. But these, they should get a little bit more height in the actual foot department and not the platform department. A little more room. Yeah. You're supposed to be on your toes running, though, right? Oh yeah, because they are my mm. iron. Oh, like heels. Like no, 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 arms back. You know, Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> shit he's so fast i can't even see hey, these look kind of cool though from i the do front. like those they're ones. awesome don't from, they from the front they do look sweet yeah because if i do this it's kind of like my shoes match my arms <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah your, your angle of attack it matches you're right <laughs> fucking area 51 laser ain't getting me uh -uh. how about that alien just flying over that american airlines flight the other day in new mexico aj yeah what do they what do they say in the cockpit Thought it was a missile? Yeah. Cruise missile. Yeah. A target up here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's what they said. Cylindrical shape or something? Cylindrical shape. Mm -hmm. Felt like a missile, they said. Yeah. One above them. Is this, do you think this was one of the smart ones or one of the ones that you just smack in the mouth? Well, this is a smart one, obviously. <laughs> now, there might be a smack in the mouth one in like the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the luggage part. You know what up. I mean? <laughs> kind of like snuck in. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? There might be the cylindrical ones that are, because a plane, by the way, is cylindrical. Yep. But uh, a, a much faster plane that's just flying over and kind of alphaing our planes, by the way. No if wings. it's just flying right over with no wings at all, we yeah. figured out how to do this. It's it's like the bullet in Mario Kart when you're in dead oh, last. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of what it was right above the plane. I think these ones are not ones you want to smack in the mouth at all. I don't think any of them are. I wouldn't. I don't think you need to challenge any of them if you if you encounter an alien. Yeah, I'm saying we try to have a, a diplomatic conversation, but if that if they want to go, hey, put them up, pal. I'll go, listen, I've been training in a fucking Oculus literally with a alien, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is nothing. And if it's one of those white trash aliens that somehow made it here in a luggage container, uh -huh. like you can definitely give him a fucking <clears throat> smack right in the mouth. Banging a banging a banging a pow to pow to pow. He's probably used to fighting, getting smacked in the mouth. Especially that dumb alien. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they bring him along for. Yeah. Wait, what do you think? Could yeah. you, is there any kind of question you could come up with that you could ask him initially on meeting all these aliens that would tell you instantly, hey, this is one of the dumb ones? Sup? I think that's it. I think that's all you do. What do the smart ones do when you say that? The smart ones are baffled and disgusted, just like the smart humans. You know what I mean? And if he goes, sup, back, it's like, gotcha. What's up, See dude? You. you know what I mean? I think that's what you do. It feels like they're going to be able to adjust, I think. Yeah. And adapt rather well. Elon has. I mean, he's like, what, seven feet tall or whatever? Uh -huh. It's simple for him. And he's yeah. just figured he's adapted pretty well. He smoked weed. Yeah, he did. That's right. <laughs> to blend in. Disgusting. Odie Diggs is fucking disappointed. Uh, <laughs> Elon Musk is smoking dope. Odie, <laughs> you're Doge King. <laughs> hey, Odie's legit though. I don't know why. Yes. You, what, I don't know what person I, I saw that earlier. So you guys found out it was an Aldi charcuterie board, and you guys backed away. Well, like we Google so Aldi wow. charcuterie first of all. We we Google. There's no deli there. Okay. So there's so the no cheese, deli. I bet the, the cheese from Aldi that. Billy took time out of his busy schedule to go get and set up. It's probably the same cheese you may buy at, at any other kind Thank of convenience you, store. Like AJ. Or whatever. AJ, you got seven kids, okay? And it seems like with the no book covers in the back, you probably mishandled your money all the time. So you have to go <laughs> to Aldi to get this knockoff cheese <laughs> or whatever the case is, okay? What we were saying is, hey, this is Shark Board Friday. We don't cut corners here. And if the name is actually all discount, I just thought that there should have been a little bit higher standard. Uh, now, I was not the most upset, obviously. I was not the most upset, but I, I definitely heard the conversation. And there was a lot of complaints, a lot from Nick, though. Mm -hmm. AJ, you remember when Randy Moss went back to the Vikings and basically got kicked off the team because he said, I wouldn't feed this food to my dogs. He said, you know, I used to eat crap like this. Then I got money. That's how I feel about Aldi. It's for the <laughs> poor. Oh, 25 no. cents in the shopping cart to get in so people don't steal it. It's trash, dude. We got real grocery stores. We don't need to be going to Aldi. If you go to Aldi, that's fine. Good for you. But I'm above it. I'm not doing no, it. No, no, Nick. <laughs> I'm above, above it. it. That boy. Nick, by the way, I think Nick. At the very end, though. At the very end, Nick. It's, if you go to Aldi, it's okay. But I'm above it. I'm not me. <laughs> I'm better than you. Nick, I do believe earlier Nick said, hey, listen. Okay. Maybe at some points of life you have to have Aldi, and that's okay. I did. But this particular shark board for this shark board Friday, 
nobody's in that position. So wow. that is where Nick and I kind of. I also used to ride the bus to work. Guess this, what? Things change. I can't wait for Nick to have a couple kids walking down the aisle at Aldi. Now, hold on. Now, that is possible. And my kid's probably going to end up shopping at Aldi for his entire <laughs> life. But the thing that was surprising was COVID Cowboy, who is loves the finer things yeah. in life, was like, no, nah, you haven't seen Aldi in 15 years. Yeah. Like, he, he came out to bet he's an Aldi every week guy. It's a higher quality brand of products, but no just way. at a lower in price. <laughs> Whoa. So, competitive price. So you're saying that it's not a lower quality. It's a great deal place. You yeah. get great deals. You great don't deals. get Cheerios. You get Honey Hoops. The place stays. Who gets cereal? <laughs> We're adults, dude. Oh, uh, wow. Well, you need to back off that one real quick. I had a bowl of Fruity Pebbles last night. I it love was Pebbles. just as delicious as it was as a child, and I will continue that through my whole life. With that being said, you get Fruit Rocks at Aldi, okay, uh, instead of Fruity Pebbles. That's so not true. They have is, all the brand names. Yeah. They have the brand okay. names. AJ, do you do the grocery shopping in your household? Uh, I do a lot of it, yeah, because I order it. My wife likes to go to the store and go there. I just order stuff from Amazon Prime. Okay, you know? so you don't have to have the in, in-store experience the same with Foxy, <laughs> the same even, with Diggs. doesn't even fucking know. Not even. This I is just like Foxy I, and Diggs, by I'm the way. With, I'm with I AJ. go to the store. What are you talking I'm about? with AJ. This, hold on. This is exactly – Foxy and Diggs, by the way, they get in this long dispute, long dispute about how we're all wrong about the shark minutes board. to 30 minutes It long. was yeah. maybe 30 minutes long. This is real. <laughs> we're coming into the show fresh out of this thing. There was, there was nothing to talk about today. Okay, so nothing happened. This Aldi – Thing took over and at the very end of it foxy and Diggs go we would we would definitely wouldn't have done the shark shark board from all no, no, but no. never <laughs> never would have done that but no but i wouldn't do it at kroger, kroger, kroger either or meyer either you go to a professional place to get a real no. shark food yes so do you guys only like so you guys like all the fancy terrible tasting cheese is that what you're telling me no 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 we no, just no, like no. the nice nice like moist fresh you know the it, meats the, uh, good good you know what i mean it's a shark oh. board Billy, wherever Billy is back there in his dungeon, do it again next time. Just don't tell him you got it from Aldi. That's well, not going to we'll happen. Too late. It's already too Bill, late, pal. Bill's not going to spend money to make a chart board. Well, this either. is actually the other person. This is somebody else's money. Billy actually yeah. made 20 bucks off of this because he, he did the Aldi route, which is save money while buying similar stuff. He did that to the tune of 25 bucks. It was a delicious chart board, and yeah. I made some money. It's a win-win. In Bill's defense, we did get into this mess because the previous board maker refused to cut the meat thinly enough. That is true. <laughs> So, who, it, who? Lou. So he 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 claims that King Louis the Thirteenth would have hired him to make his charcuterie boards. And last week there was some uh, response from the crowd that it was impossible to really enjoy the charcuterie board because each piece of meat was like a fillet, basically. Yeah. So it was like a pepperoni cut, you know what I mean, like this big and on top of each other. I didn't mind it. Hey, I did not mind it oh. at all. But Bailey criticized heavily. And then this week, Bailey comes in with some Aldi prepackaged stuff, and it caused quite a conversation that inevitably digs Foxy and Bailey were on the other side of until the very end where Diggs and Foxy turned their back on Bailey to join our side no, in the entire there's league. No way. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly, my whole point of that that's exactly what happened. Was that you guys liked the charcuterie board. Everyone loved it until you heard all the all of a sudden though. it tasted bad. I, saying, I, was like, I shop at Aldi for a lot of sense? things. Charcuterie's not one of them because that's not their specialty. A lot of stores have specialties. Charcuterie's not Aldi's specialty. Have we showed the what board is? yet? We what should is show the board. There was a stark change uh, you rate like... of consumption whenever the Aldi name drop was announced. <laughs> People were eating it pretty quickly. A lot of specialty until items. Until that name AJ. was dropped. A lot of specialty items. Yeah, like I well, I I used to go there all the time. I I loved like the uh, the generic Pepsi, generic Mountain Dew. Man, there's a lot of people tweeting shit. They're all pissed off. DeAndre Hopkins. What, what happened? Arizona Cardinals. Oh Jesus Christ! Why the Arizona Cardinals do this? Five days ago, the Arizona Cardinals tweeted out a compliment of DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Year one in Arizona for DeAndre Hopkins, 115 catches, 1,407 receiving yards, six touchdowns, became the youngest player in NFL history to reach 10,000 career receiving yards, named to his fifth Pro Bowl, second team, all pro, says the Arizona Cardinals five days ago. And he just tweeted out, and they said I'm only worth a second rounder or whatever. <laughs> Classic Easter week. Huh? Oh, no, he was talking shit on Houston. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. That's on me. I knew Easterby was involved. <laughs> That's 100% on me. So DeAndre Hopkins still hold grudge against Easterby and the way things went down to Houston. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. I love that. Houston's on fire. Is Arizona going to win one? Oh, 
Is Kyler Murray going to become a guy? He definitely can become a guy, but will – yeah, last year was so weird, like the up and down. I, I don't think he was fully healthy. What was wrong with him? What was his injury? His shoulder. shoulder. He got sacked oh. on his shoulder and then kind of – remember he played the last game for like a little bit, then came back in late? It was visibly different. Yeah. Their defense wasn't very good last year either, though. Stafford in the division now. Seahawks could be worse. The Andre is trying to recruit JJ over there. I don't, I don't know if that one's going to happen. Oh, I'm out here. We got a weekend. I just fucked that one up. Which one? So that's about done. Yeah, I think this one's done. <laughs> what, the show? Or what are you talking about? That's the week. <laughs> Misread the tweet a little bit. So. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> You know, I think it's, I think it's all, that's all she wrote. Oh, you guys, because you misread the two. I was trying to figure out where you were going with this. Like, oh, Bro, I, I saying something to the Cardinals. By the way, I thought he was too. I was like pumped up about it. I was super pumped up about it. There was <laughs> moments where he looked visibly upset this year, but that's most wide receivers. Whoa. That's, yeah, all year. It depends on when they put the camera on, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> hey, great week, AJ. You had a great week. Great job, AJ. Good job, A to the J. Congrats. Congratulations. Rookie Me. of the year. How are you going to celebrate? Me? I'm yeah. probably gonna take a substantially large nap at some you point. And, you yeah. and Oda, you and Shinjago. Oh, come Dude. on. <laughs> the disrespect. Is text. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Nin, Ninjago. Ninjago's a <laughs> he, He's gonna roundhouse kick you into oblivion if you keep disrespecting him. I apologize oh. to the man. Yeah, the kids were you tweeting me. Ninjago or whatever. Like Shinigami, dude. Bro, you tweeting me last night, just or texting me last night, just an absolutely wrong name for that guy. <laughs> Was I couldn't figure it out. I didn't want to Google it. That's all. That's the only reason why. I couldn't figure what it out. What happened with uh, Shinigami's shin and AJ's uh, chin? That AJ's jaw. Uh, a nuclear yeah, explosion? <laughs> Probably. No. Potentially I'm out as well. <laughs> out cold. He would give me my first concussion. Hey, sure. Shin <gasps> Shinigami, by the way, he said he's getting back into his best shape he's ever been. Wants yeah. to make a Bellator run. And put on a show. I watch his, his opponent, Big Smile. Hey, Big Small is, uh, he's a big guy. Did yeah. Ariel get in contact with him yet? Oh, that's, yeah. But Big Smile, he threw punches like this. Like, oh, come on. Shinigami big said, though, that his defense is so good. You know, Big Smile likes to push guys into the fence. If Shinigami can hold him off, I mean, yeah. he'll be just fine. Has Ariel Hawani interviewed Shinigami yet? <laughs> yeah. What's his name? What'd you say? What's that, dude? <laughs> what, what'd you call him? Shinigami, dude, don't try to catch me slipping. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm, I'm big time Shinigami sponsor at this point. <laughs> is Ariel Hawani going to answer? My favorite thing is if he does. You're live. You're live. You're live. I'm, I'm literally in the middle of an interview right now. Yeah. I'm, uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> he had to call twice. Did to tell the guy. I'll pause. Ariel. Another interview. Oh, big UFC fight this week. Oh, yeah. Huh? Is there? Yeah, that one guy's fighting that other guy. <laughs> Are they really? Oh, this weekend, man. that guy? The guy who throws hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bombs. Is yeah, there a yeah. fight this weekend? The other guy's going to take it to the ground. I don't think so. Derek Lewis knocked a dude out last week. Oh, oh with that uppercut. Yeah. Yeah. He's awesome. His balls is hot, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the man. Yeah. That guy's the That's man. It. He fucking throws real bombs, that guy. Yeah. No, there's uh, a, that's there's a big a name, so I don't know how to pronounce them. UFC he, fight night tomorrow night. He's a massive underdog, too, in that. Jersey fight. Neo. Oh, I didn't know. Rosenstuck. Versus Cyril Gain. Cyril Gain? Yeah. C I R Y L. How would you pronounce that? C Cyril. 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 Yeah, that's right. And then G A N E. Gain. Ghani. Cyril Gain. Probably Ghani. Ghane. Yeah. Ghani. Oh, yeah. Gain. E is silent. Gan. Maybe the G is silent. Ain. Oh. oh. That'd be pretty sweet. Maybe, uh, was it Nick Wusa? The guy that Pat, uh, that was the name you threw out last week when the guy's name was like Chet Franklin. Excuse me. <laughs> Mitch Loeschletter. Come on. <laughs> you said, oh yeah, Nick Wusa? That's what you threw out. I did not say that. <laughs> yes, not me. You did. How would I even know that name? <laughs> did you make stuff up, oh, dude? Oh, Gone A. It's Gone A. Mm. A-Y. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, we, well, I gave that as one of the answers, I think. That's mm -hmm. why I was talking to Marc-Andre Fleury earlier. Yeah. The E would be the, uh, yeah. that's a French under the E. Yeah. Like Mane. There was no on it. accent. <laughs> Is Ohio State dead, AJ? What's going on? Hey, there's a doc coming out. You guys are going to have to burn that place down, huh? Uh oh. Classic George doc. Clooney, right? I saw George Clooney's going to, yeah, the old uh, wrestling doctor, I believe. 
Well, and also I believe the coach, that. right, who's the the guy now. He's a senator guy. Oh, Jim Jordan was an assistant coach at the time, yeah. It's going to get scandalous. Uh -oh. Hey, it's going to get scandalous over there. And uh, Foxy, mm -hmm. you know, Michigan what? State stuff. Once that happened to Michigan State, everything burned to the ground. Is that going to happen to Ohio State? Uh-oh. Classic Big Ten. I don't think it's the same. I don't know. I have no Penn idea, State really. I know some of the yeah. people involved that are were, uh, you know, sounding the alarms for this guy. But he's dead. He committed suicide like in 05, maybe. Really? Seems to be. The doctor, yeah. So he's a real scumbag. Man. That's like that dude, the gymnast guy. Yep. Yeah, he shoot himself in the head like that other scumbag. <laughs> Jesus. Who? The guy from yesterday, two days ago. How did he do it? Shot himself in the head. Oh, I did. I thought he was in his jail cell or something. No, no. No, he was about to get. Because okay. more was coming out, I think, maybe. Yeah. They were uh, collusion or trafficking alongside Nasser or whatever. Jeez. How about Nasser? Just do it. You know what I mean? Mm. Fuck that guy. Yeah, legit. <laughs> legit. Like Nasser's alive? Yeah. Yeah. Won't do it. Jeez. He'll be around forever, huh? Him and Fogel. Yeah, yeah Sam Roach. No, Fogel's getting out. What are you talking about? No. 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 Hold on. Check. Look it up. Fogel got like a 25 years. I don't know. Like, yeah, I know he's. I love how you just use Subway Fogel guy. The only way to find him. Well, you you probably used other things too that you didn't. 2028, tell us. dude. <laughs> he's getting out in 2028. That's seven years. Bro, didn't That's some guy just get out who killed like three people and eight? A guy just got out of jail. Yeah, who... he grabbed the guy's uh, heart, heart, right? And he got get out. He's out of jail. And then there's some people that can't Hammer? get out of jail right now. Yeah. Oh, the glitch thing. Because there's a about. glitch. <laughs> that would suck. It's insane right now. Yeah, you're out tomorrow. Actually, we can't figure out the system. Is the entire world just potentially just fucked right now? Yeah. I would say. It's like, this show does well, so of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. Let's go. To, let's say, let's do a couple of this here. Aloha, Justin in Hawaii. What's going on, pal? What's up, Pat? AJ, boys. I got a question about Shinigami from yesterday. Uh, was he just... He was absolutely incredible, number one. Number Thank two, you. are you guys surprised of how legit he actually was with answering all your questions about karate and everything like that? Well, Justin, thank, what, part, uh, what island are you on? I'm on Molokai. Oh. One of the most undeveloped ones. No... Uh, no tourists. Tourists aren't allowed. Well, I mean, they're allowed, but they don't like them. So. <laughs> but uh, if you want to get away, that come to Molokai for sure. No one will know you. Uh, you'll stand out because, you know. White. But white hate, guy. Said hate yeah, you. white. Very yeah, white. Yeah. <laughs> they'll hate you. Very white. Yeah, and, they, and they will say the, that white. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. But no, no uh, street lights. No buildings higher than the tallest coconut tree. Like, it's. That's like oh, legit paradise. Hey, that's like Lanai a little bit. Lanai has that, uh, or Lanai, he, I don't know if I pronounce it right. They have that one road that goes from the airport literally to the Four Seasons, okay? But yeah. you get to that road, you, you know, there's like clay, you're driving on like actual dirt roads and everything like that. There are some parts of, it's my, it's my favorite place. There's some parts that are just completely deserted, basically. It's fucking beautiful over there. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a three-mile beach, and you can go on like, fourth of july on a saturday or something and be the only one there like it's incredible super cool hell yeah i love hawaii it is a haul though that sounds incredible there's one there's one island in hawaii that like uh there's been no they i think they still like they hunt live off the land like literally no no electricity at all like original Jeez. still it's like uh there's a bunch of those islands you know there's a bunch yeah. of them you, there's a bunch of the islands and uh last night by the way in one of the quiz shows uh used to be titled inner island airway by the way hawaiian air because there's so much traveling that you can fly around in the hawaiian islands there's a lot of shit over there but it is a haul i don't know how anybody sits in the back of the plane for those trips i don't know how you do it you, you must have great knee bones i'll tell you that did you get engaged in Hawaii on a helicopter? Well, I wasn't on a helicopter when I got engaged. I was actually on my knee, okay, because I'm yeah. a gentleman, oh. all right, on in front of a waterfall. Hey, what did you say, for real? What did you say leading up to, like, when you actually brought the ring out? I couldn't tell you. I don't remember that. It ended okay. with, uh, 
she like started pushing me, but we were in front of a waterfall getting wet and the ring was just in between my oh. fingers here. Oh. And uh, she was like, are you serious? She gave me like an, are you serious thing? And I was like, yeah. And then she started like crying or whatever, but we were on rocks. So it was a little bit off balance. I mean, it was, it was not the most ideal thing. I didn't really, you know, think it out at all, but. I mean, it worked. I had it in my back pocket, which, by the way, Jorts had a hole in it. Oh, oh no. I did not know that until I was pulling it out. I was like, it got caught on the thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I mean, I am rolling the dice here. What do you got, Dix? N-I, apostrophe, I-H-A-U, the, the Forbidden Island, is uh, has no telephone service, no paved roads, no electricity. Huh. So. And there's no whites. There ain't a single white yeah, So Come on down, but It says right here at the bottom, no whites. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Poor Mark. What did he ask about? No idea. Did he ask? Did he ask anything? I don't know. I think he just said come visit the island. Though. No, he said don't, but then do. There was something. I don't know. There was something. <laughs> oh, it was about Shinigami. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Shinigami. 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 <laughs> 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 Bro, this show. Let's go to John in DC. John, what's going on? Great work, Foxy. Hello, anyway, Fox. John. Oh, what's up, Pat? Can you guys hear me okay? This one's for John in DC. What do you want to talk about, pal? Jeez. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I just want to make sure. Like, what's what? Up? Oh, yeah, it's what? great. You call into the show. What? what? You're from D.C. What? What? That's where all the presidents and bullshit are. Right? Hey, you're sitting around. You got the Capitol to your left. What? Hot dog shop to the right. What? And an insurrection happened a couple weeks ago. What? And you're saying, I'm going to call into the show. What? And I'm going to say, Is it, it? can you hear me? What? Do I sound good? What? Is the connection there? What? Is my phone connected to your phone so that we can have a phone call? What? You were connected, John. Thanks for the call, man. Have a good one. Let's go to Joe in Bloomington. What's going on, Joe? John didn't deserve that, but John just created a great moment. Yeah, it was a good moment. So shout out to John for a good uh, phone call. Thank you, John. Uh, thank Joe, you, what's John. going on, man? Hey, Pat and boys. AJ, how y'all doing? Joe, everything's good. You're down there in Bloomington. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, getting my PhD here in chemical biology. Whoa, Whoa so doctor. Really? What? <laughs> Congrats to you, Joe. Keep it going down there, dude. What do you want to talk about? Thank you. Yeah, before my question, I, uh, I actually looked into how many Rookie of the Year votes Adam Cole got. He only had 288. Oh, wow. out of water. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so my main question is. Three, uh, five, five. <laughs> Throw on a T-shirt right now. Yeah, no big deal. No, <laughs> three, five, five. Three, five. Could be the most ever. Is that the highest win of all time? Uh, not sure about that. All right. But, do do uh, your little PhD uh, digging and come back next time. But what do you want to talk about, brother? Uh, yeah. So I remember about a month or so ago, you and the boys were talking about League of Legends, and I know they tried their best, and you know they were doing they were doing their okay. best. But What's that? You know, I wanted to see if uh, you know uh, I do play League of Legends a lot on my spare time, and oh, yeah. I try to stream it on Twitch whenever I can. You know, want to see if Magic, you, AJ, Magic or the together? boys. Uh -huh. No, no, no. League of Legends. League it's, Legends like, um, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. And like Magic the yeah. yeah. It's like Pokemon cards? <laughs> no, it's not like Pokemon cards. No. Don't be stupid. It's like Candyland. No, no. Is it like Hooked and Ladder? But yeah. That'd be awesome. I, uh, Tamagotchi? Shoots and ladders. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Guess who? Uh, but yeah, I tried to stream though. it on, on Twitch. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know you've been trying to do more Oculus, Oculus streams on Twitch. Maybe, you know, we can try to... Try to do something like that. If you or the boys wanna wanna learn anything, I, I try to I stream on uh, J Ficori zero three. J Ficori, you know, spell that. Hold on, spell that. Oh, J. Funny. Yeah, J F as in Frank. A K H O U R Y zero three. J F K hour. Yeah, yeah, hour and then a Y at the end of that. Oh. Yeah, so J F. A K H O U R Y zero three. A J F A K R E Y O three. Yep. Hour three. Yeah. And you just sit and play League of Legends all day? Wow, four hour streams. Not all day, but you know, I try to play League of Legends mostly. Sometimes I'll play some other games as well, but you know, you stream five days. 
What's going on? Hey, Zito just called you lazy. I know, dude. I'm trying to publish a paper for my boss. Have a little uh, respect, dude. The guy's trying to be a doctor. I, I thought he was a gamer. <laughs> I am. I am. Pick gonna be one, streaming dude. Tonight, though. I am. I am going to be streaming uh, League of Legends tonight, though. Right. So, I'm okay. stop by. People will see me on there. So, All right, we'll watch. Well, we're gonna watch. So, what's the, what's the question? Bro, I'm not. I'm not. I think he wanted us to potentially play with or watch him, but I still don't know what a League of Legends is. I, I gave it my best go. Oh. Uh, I thought it was potentially a bunch of our world's legends with teams playing against each other, but then I got showed that it's like a bunch of. Uh, oh, I, I'm looking at the guy right now. He's going to be a PhD. Shout out to him down Shut there, up. JJ Fakar Y03. The um, it's a game. It's, it's a video mayhem. game. It's yeah. It seems like a lot of fighting. You have like a little battle. You have a little army you send. It's like uh, Risk almost, but on the internet. Yeah, oh, that's a good way. Age Empires. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that what it is? Well, that's safe yeah. enough. It's strategic. You gotta fight the other people. Other magic balances out each other. Yeah, same thing. Do you play League of Legends? No. LOL. LOL. <laughs> by DOD. You huh? play DOD sometimes. Wait, is it on the computer or is it is it for Xbox? What is it? It's on, on the PC. PC, dude, come on. PC, PC, PC master race, bro. Master race. Hey, bro, these dudes build their own computers so that it can be faster, so that they can beat other people in these types of PC games. Hell yeah, that's real, hey, bro. I, I see. So there's a there's this big like electronic store that I've gone to a few times. It opens at 10 a.m. They line up at 9 a.m. And I remember I going back a while ago. I'm like, oh, something big must have came out. But every day I go, yeah. there's a, a line outside, and I'm, I always ask the people, and I'm like, what are they doing? And they're all waiting to get like. The newest upgraded processor or whatever, yeah. so they can add it to their computer to make it. It was really hard. Jay's well, still trying to get one. Jay built. Wow. Jay has built numerous computers. Yeah. yeah, you can't find shit right now. Everything new is basically sold out for months in advance because I think all the uh, Bitcoin people are using the mine coins and that kind Jay. of shit. Jay, oh. Whoa. Whoa. which by the way probably is what's happening. Oh I've learned that the amount of energy it takes to mine Bitcoin, by the way, they go to oil and gas fields and ask for their flare gas to power their computers that are mining for Bitcoin that are deep in the internet. Jeez. And I don't know what any of what that means, what I just said, but I do know that <laughs> that is exactly how it's going. But Jay, that's my brother, by the way, right there. Did you hear that? Dude just yeah. builds computers and shit. Think about that. How are we this, you know? How'd that, you think? And that's not the only thing that you guys differ on. But, yeah, I believe it. Jay, Jay seems very, very smart. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. Jay also very observant. And you know what they say, quiet math, loud brain. Hell, yeah. Jay's got a lot yeah. of thoughts up there. Mm -hmm. All right, I Jay, there's a lot that. of things popping off up no, there. No, they're both pretty quiet. All right, maybe not. Shout out. Shout out, Jay. Shout out, Jay. Shout out, Jay's quiet-ass Jay. brain, dude. <laughs> Let's go to Tyler in South Dakota. What's going on, Tyler? Pat and the boys and AJ, how are we doing on this field? Good. Friday. Hey! Hey! Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty good, Tyler. How are you? I'm good, man. Hey, before I get my question, I just want to say from all of us here in the beautiful state of South Dakota, we love you and the boys. We want you back soon. We have to go back to Brooklyn. Have so. to. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. We got to go back. Go Jacks. I mean, there's another school there, too, that I went to, the rival. So, I mean, maybe we stop there, too. Carson Wentz, Trey Lance. No, it's North Dakota. The, I mean, our old quarterback <laughs> was the infamous Chris Strofolsky. Who? Oh, Chris Strofolsky. The guy that dribbled the ball? No, from the Blue Bombers, who was the backup. Oh! Oh, that guy going to your school? I didn't know that that's where that legend was created. Yeah, he transferred from Minnesota because they didn't want him throwing the old pigskin up there in the uh, Twin we Cities. Down. So we said, why don't you come on down to Vermillion, South Dakota? Who do you almost play for? He, he almost play, played for Arizona. He played for the Cardinals when Murray went down last game of the season. He, he didn't fare, right? Uh, it did not go well. Not great. It was no. average. Was it? Yeah. Was it better or worse than Wolford? Oh, way worse. Worse. Gosh. Better or worse than Duck? Way worse. So he didn't fare? So I can say he didn't fare? He did I mean, Duck fare. started his career 5-0. and oh. Listen, I love Strafolsky. Okay, I, I fucking fan. went on a massive Strafolsky run, but I'd like to see him potentially get another shot, maybe in a situation like old Heineke got, playoffs, big game, because I don't know if Strafolsky's going to lose a big game like that. Did this guy hang up? No, I'm here. I'm here. I was I was indulging Mr. Fulsey talk. Nice. Good was night. he a cool guy? Did you ever meet him? 
Oh, I saw him at bars all the time. Dude was electric. <laughs> I seen him in that uh, that Grey Cup celebration. He was electric. Uh, I would assume. Yeah, does everybody in South Dakota kind of know each other? Um, yeah, I'd say so. It's a pretty small state, 800,000. I mean, you would walk down the street, you'd probably know a guy from, I don't know, I walk down there, I see a guy from second grade back in good old Yankton, South Dakota. You know, when you see everyone, you probably be like, hey, man, how's it going? You're like, oh. It's like the NBA. Guy. Um, Hell yeah. Chris Streveler went 11 of 16 for 105 yards and a touchdown in an interception. Oh, so Strafolski balled out. <laughs> balled out, dude. I was completely wrong. I'm sorry about that, Strafolski. I wish that game was one that mattered. Um, <laughs> what do you want to talk about, Tyler? Anything cool? Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to the Mafia on YouTube. Shout the, out. Best shout out. the best fan base in the country. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Shout, shout out. out. Thank you, now, Mom, we man. do have to remember, with that compliment, they do deserve it. But there are some times when we look down there where we go, ha, ha, come on, ha. But my question is, I'm ha. a Colts fan. <laughs> big Colts fan. I obviously have been hit or miss with Carson. I wanted Matty Stafford down in Indy over Carson. But, too, you know, last year people were saying – Billy Rivers should be going to play shuffleboard instead of throwing the pigskin over in Indianapolis. So, and look at how he turned out. So maybe, maybe we give Wentz a little chance, or maybe we just sign Strafolski. And when Wentz goes down, we bring in Strafolski. Oh, little Nick Foles Strafolski situation. Ah. Appreciate you, Tyler. Good call there. Statue. Philip Rivers did have success, I guess. But what are we settling for? Yeah. We need to get a ring. Yeah. You're only as good as your last game. Hell yeah. It's fucked up, by the way, because guys put together a hell of a career, you know, and you just go ahead and just cut that off right at the seams. Yeah, cut it right off. That's why Drew Brees is thinking about coming back. Oh, yeah. Phil Rivers did not. But uh, Drew Check. Brees like, I can't go out like that. And then Sean Payton's like, no, nah, we might be able to get Russell Wilson. You can go out like that. Quiet down. Hey, when does he have to make a decision? Rush, Sean, Drew. Drew. By the end of 5 o'clock today, I think. Soon. <laughs> It's pretty quick. Pretty quick. We're going to wait on it. Mm -hmm. We got nothing but time. Yeah. <laughs> Take some more callers to ask them if they know everybody in the state. We can't, though, because the, the calls, talk, the phones, shit. are actually controlled by at Sirius. So they turn on, the line goes to somebody else's show. So if they're on hold as our show ends, we oh. still have them in our queue. Yeah. But to get to said queue, that line is going elsewhere now. Is there, has there ever been a situation where someone's on hold for your show and they get put through to Mad Dog and they don't know and they just oh. jump out with some kind of random question to Mad Dog? I would assume, yeah. I would assume that happens. But I would assume somebody calls after yeah. our show is over and potentially does that. Or that has happened to us on the flip side. Somebody's called into the wrong show. Yeah. But Mitt's back here handling it. Mm -hmm. Ain't Mitt's that right, Mitt? Hey, Mitt. Hey, what a Mitt. week by Mitt today. Hey, what a week, Mitt. Good job, Mitt. Call Chad. Get him on the line. Chad's coming back next week. Thank God. Thank you, Chad. Chad from prison. That happened this week. Mm -hmm. Shout, it did. Shout, shout out to Chad. Chad. Fresh Thank out. Chad. Fresh out. Not a criminal. So yes, Just got caught up. Just got caught up. I think he was drinking, <laughs> by the way, he said. Mm -hmm. Oof. I think. So was that DUIs, probably? Yeah, do we? We'll ask him. I think he's going back in. Bartender, I really did. It this is time. time. Broke my parole to have, have a good time. time. When I got oh, home, it was, it was 6 a.m. The door was locked, so I kicked it in. And I'm living high on some pills. That's a banger. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, who, who sings it? Rehab, obviously. Bartender. Jesus. <laughs> what are you trying does Foxy have to take a leak? Foxy's pretty antsy back there, but he's been on his high horse all morning, so Hold he's on. been able to piss off that thing. <laughs> oh, hey, I saw it. Whoa. Oh, 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 whoa. Uh -oh. What the Aldi? Listen. We had to put a fucking stable in here for you and Nick's high horses this oh, morning. Oh, the Aldi? Whoa. Protecting oh. Aldi is not a high horse whoa, whoa, move. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that Come why you on. did it, by the way? As Good Nick the... said, it's for the poor, so I don't think poor own high horses. No, that ain't what he said was, does not indicate the thoughts of mine. Mm. Okay? No? No. The poor's comment, not the case. <laughs> now, will I ever have to eat at Aldi again? 
probably. Pat, you wouldn't wipe your ass with the food at Aldi. You wouldn't step foot. <laughs> is in that, that true? Place. Is that true? That's not true. Yeah, I That's mean, we, what we found out this morning: <laughs> yeah. everyone here eats at Aldi except for Nick. That's what we. Yeah, found I out did in learn it. My wife shopped at Aldi just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, and I did enjoy whatever it was <laughs> just a couple weeks ago. Turns out that was after the whole argument ended. I had to call my wife, <laughs> mm -hmm. babe. We shop at Aldi, and by we, I mean you. She goes, we have, and you loved it. So maybe we need to give Aldi a little bit of a break. Hell That's yeah. right. Hell yeah. Nah, it ain't happening. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, but these two scumbags that were pro Aldi also turned their backs on Aldi yeah. as soon the as they could. The second they got As for, soon as they got Only for true. charcuterie. Which is what we go to it was. Which is what it was. Hold the bay which was is what it was. Center. Which is what it was. Out was here. It was about charcuterie. That's literally what we were talking it's about. about the store. AJ, sorry you weren't here for it. And you, yeah. some of these shark boards out here now, it's getting unbelievable. Yeah. Wait, who do you, is it a rotation on who brings the supplies? So Louis Tubbs, <laughs> wow. this is Billy's. This is the Aldi charcuterie. It that is, is super legit. Uh, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was an incredible, so good, incredible shark board. It was very, very good. But once you Until really he told you, until he said where it was from. Now, nah, even the first couple of bites, everybody was like, "No, <laughs> that was my whole point." What's this? It's fine. All Pat the food sniffed is that fine. thing out the second he walked in. He said, "You're not even cutting the meats. You're just pulling them out of that package and stuffing them on the thing there." It was all prepackaged meat. I mean, come on, slice your own meat, Bill. I did say that as soon as I got in there, and not because I have an expectation of my charcuterie board, but because there is a charcuterie board beef happening yeah. about who makes a better charcuterie board. I'm like, yo, if you're just pulling this shit out of these bags, like that is going to be something that's going to be judged. Bill did not care though. Bill stayed the course, got out his knife. He had a he brought a Big knife, by the way. It was knife. an alarming knife. Started cutting some cheese up. He's like, it's pick and choose here. You're going to pick and choose here. It was a good looking board. I'm not saying anything, but he will be probably docked points in the charcuterie board community for the fact that he was just pulling them out of just basic Aldi boxes, basically. Especially when, you know, the $100 he got to spend on the charcuterie was given to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very interesting part of this whole story. I want to know the last time any of you actually yeah. came in and cut your own prosciutto. Never, but we, we, we weren't yeah. in we didn't the, sign up. We didn't sign up for the That's the thing, that's the thing Bill. The Bill, that's Bill. That's the thing. You put yourself in the position. Bill, that's, what I'm that's the thing about your generation, Bill. You put yourself in this situation. I agree. And then now it's like, well, everybody else is blah, blah. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I am not. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I never said I will build a shark board until I was put in the position saying, listen, it's your shark board or no shark board. <laughs> Bill, you ran your mouth yeah. about the other shark you board. Ran dude. Shark, shark board out of the office, Bill. No, shark board did stink. <laughs> Everyone Bill. in here just said that the shark board did stink. It didn't stink. It was a great shark board. It's a good shark board. It was Bill's or? I think both were great. Me too. The, the one, one that wasn't purchased at Aldi was very good. The one two weeks ago <laughs> with the spicy cheeses was the best oh, by far. Two weeks ago was the and best And I one. think what happened was after that one was so good, we went back down to basic. <laughs> We didn't want to eat the, the one-inch pepperoni that was sliced with a one phone. Inch. Bill, you just said the one two weeks ago was so good. That's the one you called out. Well, we're actually one week behind. It was one three weeks ago. Then the two-week no, ago one was terrible. Oh, we didn't have God. one last Look week. at you. Who do you think yep. you are? Oh, yeah, AJ I didn't am. bring one last week. Bro, listen. I brought, sandwiches. I brought other stuff. It was Thursday. I'm, I'm more of a charcuterie Friday. paper plate guy, yeah. okay? <laughs> the charcuterie board was brought into my life because of this particular office thing that started happening. Yeah. And it became pretty good. You know, for like four weeks almost. Like a build like, it was like, hey, here we go. We got a big thing going. I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed it. I, I never really got into the shark boards, so I was like kind of enjoying it. And then I was hearing from other people who allegedly knew a lot about shark boards. They're like, this is a bad charcuterie board. And, and it was like, really? And then it turned into like, well, if you think so, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it then? And that's how Billy got into the place that he was in. And that's how the Aldi shark board came to be yeah. today. That's exactly, that's how we got here. Isn't that right, Bill? That's pretty pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well word word, yeah. Bill hustled his way into getting 25 bucks, just mm -hmm. like he got himself yes. 10 chairs over there. <laughs> He's going to get eight more packs of Pokemon cards. With and, and, the way you know. the conversation is going, someone from Aldi might give us a couple free shark <laughs> Bill's going to be the face of the shark uh, of charcuterie from Aldi, and uh, Cow COVID Cowboy's going to be on the horse behind him. You know what I mean? It's going to be an incredible thing. Well, well headquarters is in Chicago. What's that? Headquarters for Aldi's in Chicago. Really? Yeah. 
I wonder, do they have like a showcase Audi up there? Because the one that <clears> Diggs goes to is the showcase nice. store yeah. that they yeah. have. Diggs doesn't go to it. I do go. I don't shop or do the purchasing, but I'm there. <laughs> Just walk around Audi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what guy's still over there? What? When the Pushes wife goes, the grocery, cart. When the wife goes grocery shopping, yeah. I push the cart and I just hang out. Oh, okay. What are you putting in there? I don't, I don't care. Why don't you oh, some Walmart? generic bullshit. Our honey yeah. hoos. Yeah. These are honey hoos. We'll take them out of the box. Just wrap up the bag. Mm -hmm. Nobody will know the difference. Some fruit by the toes. And fruity rocks. Yep. And cinnamon toast mm -hmm. crisp mm -hmm. and honey bunches some of those oh, yeah. some snowy <laughs> flakes now i don't know because i've never purchased cereal in a long long time but i did hear that they do have cinnamon toast crunch like the normal no oh, yeah. way Aldi has cinnamon toast crunch they got the last couple years yeah really they got the rights yeah germany was like we want that and they got it <laughs> well said what happened? I don't know. Hey, shout out Aldi, dude. Yeah. What a come up. Nine. Is the Cinnamon Toast Crunch then discounted from everywhere else because the place is oh. called All Discount? <laughs> He's a liar, dude. They don't have Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Of course yeah, they, they do. don't. Of Are course. you sure? Yes, I'll no do way. it. I'm looking on the, the brochure. Oh, the brochure. <laughs> they don't even have a <laughs> the weekly ads. All right, let's get out of here. This show stinks. All right, see you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Uh, thanks to all the guests, obviously, and all of you. There was 20,000 people watching until just like <laughs> two seconds ago. <laughs> that is so dumb. <laughs> that is so, so dumb. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, we're lucky to do it. We hope to continue to do it. Over the next couple of months, I'll be intrigued to see how these shows go because there are some days where there's nothing that happens and we have no idea how it's going to go. So thank you for rocking with us. Uh, don't be scared to call in. Enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. If you get wadded out of the room, that's good for the show. So you should feel like the badge of honor type mm -hmm. thing. If your call stinks, hey, come back next time. Listen, we have terrible shows all the time, and we just get back on the horse the next day. AJ, any final words for the weekend for the people watching on YouTube? I thought that was good advice you gave for people to take their shot. Like the guy that got wadded out of his call, he probably went back. Maybe his wife said, oh, you're on hold for three hours. How'd it go? And he's like, it was actually amazing. She said, oh, what did you say? He's like, actually, I didn't even speak. They just chanted back and forth to each other and then hung up on me. So it was perfect. <laughs> they do not have some of those crunch at all, do you? Yeah, we know. <laughs> when you word it that way, AJ, that is, I do feel bad. I would like to let you know that. It's oh, good content. Yeah, remembered. But it's yeah. great content, so we appreciate that. Tell your wife. I don't know if she's going to be as understanding, but hopefully she will. All right, Hammer Don's at what time? 3.50. And eight minutes from now, right here, YouTube.com. 3.30. Pat McAfee Show. Good gambling advice going into the weekend. Cheers. We'll see you on Monday.